Good morning and half a day. The Committee on General Government Operation Appropriation Housing is now called to order. For the record, today is Thursday, July 15, 2021, and the time now is 9.05. Notice for this budget hearing was disseminated via email to all senators and all main media bro broadcasting outlets. First public notice was issued on July 6, followed by July 8 and July 12. The committee will hear and accept testimony on Bill 55-36 COR, the fiscal year 2022 budget appropriation act as requested by the governor relative to the Guam Customs and Quarantine Agency fiscal year 2022 budget request. General rules for this public hearing is those testifying on behalf of Bill 55-36 COR relative to the Guam Customs and Quarantine Agency are invited to, they have been invited to the panel and they will, will begin with Mr. Ike Pareto, which is the director, and he will introduce his staff that are participating. Written testimony shall be submitted to the committee. Please provide my legislative staff with your written testimony for photocopying. Testimonies may be read and lengthy testimonies should be summarized to about five minutes, but uh, Mr. Ike, you have all morning. And I know it's not going to take you all morning, but you have all, you have more than sufficient time. Those testifying will be allowed to present oral testimony. Once you're done, please remain in the room for questions. Questions and testimony shall be confined to the substance or the nature of the agenda, which is your, the budget of Guam Customs. Personal inference as to the character or the motive of any senator or any individuals testifying is not permitted. Any violation of the general rule of conduct will result in the removal from the budget hearing. Proper form and decorum shall be practiced by all present in the public hearing room for these proceedings. Individuals who fail to maintain proper form and decorum may be restricted from providing oral testimony or may be asked to, to leave the room, but I, I actually will be removed from the room, period. When you speak, please make sure that the microphone is on and that you speak into the microphone. Please state your name and your title for the record. So as we go along, other than yourself, uh, Mr. Director, I, when any, anyone else speaks, please just state your name first one time. Once you do that one time, you won't be asked to identify yourself. All right? And at this time, I ask the Sergeant Arms to please uh, have the panel rise and you'll be sworn in. Please raise your right hand. Under penalty of perjury, do you all affirm that any and all information that you provide today whether it be verbally, electronically, and in writing, be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you out. Mr. Chair, you're all under oath. You may proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Arms. I'd ask now Mr. Pare Mr. Pareto to please uh, begin. I know you have slides, so um, when you're ready, go ahead and begin, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of this uh, committee. My name is Ike Pareto, and I'm the director of the Customs and Quarantine Agency. I would like to introduce my team that's with me this morning. To my left is my uh, ASO, Ms. Pilar Arbolito. To my right is the Chief of Customs, Vince Parrish, and to his right is Officer John Rick Mendiola. I would also, before I begin, I would just like to thank each and every one of you for the opportunity to discuss our requested budget and to provide useful information on why this budget is important to the agency. The Customs and Quarantine Agency is Guam's first line of defense. We enforce local and federal laws and collaborate with the federal and local government entities. CQA is responsible for protecting Guam's borders, securing our ports of entry, while facilitating trade, commerce, and travel. Over the past several months, and because of COVID-19, Guam has experienced a trend with declining passengers. Consequently, collection at the airport is falling beyond 2020 budget level. However, this pandemic has placed many of our programs on hold until our physical condition improves. The agency continues to perform its traditional mission, such as conducting inspections of arriving passengers, vessels, aircrafts, commercial merchandise, and any tangible products for individuals, private, commercial, or government use, 
preventing unauthorized entries and seizing illegal drugs and other contraband, protecting our agricultural interests from harmful pests and diseases, and collecting use tax. CQA's highest priority is to ensure health, safety, and security of not only our people of Guam, but also our workforce. Officers have tirelessly throughout this pandemic, despite the risk to themselves, the border now, more than ever, is vital to protecting public health, and customs officers are dedicated to serving and safeguarding our people. And I am ex extremely proud of the hard work and professionalism I see every day. These officers are dedicated men and women who continue to meet the challenges with integrity and commitment. CQA maximizes the current personal resources by coordinating and disseminating information and intelligence to all ports of entry. This is accomplished by having personnel dedicated to the five ports of entry and bringing specialized sections to enhance the inspection and screening process, focusing on high-risk areas. Mr. Speaker, at this time, I would like to focus my attention on my presentation this morning. Can I have the first slide, please? This is our 2020 budget hearing. Next slide. And of course, I've already introduced my team. Next slide. The mission of the agency. The mission of the agency is to enforce local and federal laws and regulations, protecting and securing Guam's port of entry, improving and securing facilitation of trade, commerce, and travel, interdict and intercept all harmful substances and commodities, and investigate and dismantle illegal activities occurring at our borders. Next slide, please. As you can see, the agency has four major divisions, the inspection and control division, the logistics and support, special enforcement, and administrative section. Next slide, please. We start with the director's office, and of course the director's office provide overall leadership to the agency's personnel. As you can see, uh, the director, which is myself, the chief of customs, the assistant chief of special projects, internal affairs, public information officer, and our private secretary. Next slide. I'm going to start with the inspection and control division, and this division is the largest division within the agency. It effectuates border control programs, procedures, and policies facilitating the inspection and control of merchandise, aircrafts, and vessel to include persons. Next. We start with the airport operation. The airport operation is a 24-hour operation, and they conduct clearance and facilitation of services of all arriving aircrafts traveling at Abway, which is the international airport, to include Anderson Air Force Base. Next slide, please. Our air cargo operation, air cargo section conducts the entry and clearance, inspection, and facilitation of air freight commodities arriving and or departing the Guam International Airport air cargo facility. As you can see, uh, this is a section that takes care of, of all uh, air freight that comes in to the airport. Next slide. Part of the section of the inspection and control is the maritime section. Maritime section conducts all entry clearances, boarding and inspection of all vessels and ocean freight commodities arriving or departing the Port of Authority of Guam, which is Aganya Boat Basin, Aigat Marina, Naval Station, and the logistical warehouses throughout the islands, known as the CFS stations. Next slide, please. Special Enforcement Division, this division is a specialized division tasked with conducting enforcement and regulatory operations or assignments at the border employing specialized asset, uh, techniques and assets. This section comprises of seven major sections within this special enforcement division, which is the contraband enforcement team, the task force, maritime, biosecurity, agriculture, rock detector dock, 
to include maritime interdiction. Next slide, please. The contraband enforcement team conducts complex investigation on illicit narcotics trafficking and other criminal activities occurring at the ports of entry. Customs officers assigned to the sections conduct the following. They initiate investigation, undercover operations, uh, seize illicit drugs, apply execute warrants, etc. Next. We do have the task force office section under the Special Enforcement Division, and this assignment, our assignment to the federal task force officers to perform joint local and federal investigation on illicit narcotics, firearms, human trafficking, money laundering trafficking, and joint terrorism operations and other criminal activities occurring at our port of entry. Next slide. The drug detector dog unit is also part of the Special Enforcement Division. Officers assigned to the DDDU are highly trained and efficient handlers to, who deploy with their certified canine companion to conduct interdiction operations to detect illicit narcotics and boat smuggling shipments throughout our port of entry. Next. Our Maritime Energy Task Force is also another section. Uh, officers are highly trained in these areas and they are tasked with conducting water-based operation enforcement and regulatory. Okay. Uh, this particular section uh, is, is also uh, uh, a part of a joint law enforcement agreement entered into with federal agencies and jurisdiction of the ocean, uh, oceanic responsibilities under NOAA. Next. Biosecurity Task Force, as mandated by Public Law 31-43, CQA's Biosecurity Task Force is composed of highly trained officers charged with mitigating all referred agriculture-related commodities and incidents occurring at the ports of entry to protect against the risk of plant and animal diseases from entering. Next slide, please. We also have an agriculture canine unit section within the SCD. And this particular section is charged with uh, highly trained officers and their canine companions conducting detection and interdiction operations at the ports of entry to identify regulated and prohibited agriculture commodities that pose a risk to Guam, flora, fauna, and to be deployed throughout the ports of entry. Next. Next slide. We'll now move to the Logistic and Support Division. Uh, this division comprises of five major sections, the Property Evidence Custodial Office, the Training Section, Property and Records, Fines and Fees, Forfeiture, and Research and Development. Next. Fines and Fees, this section is charged with specialized areas tasked to assume Border originated investigations formed from the few officers conduct internal and external compliance program and oversight and provide guidance to the public, stakeholders, and management on matters under customs responsibilities. Next slide, please. Of course, we have the property every custodial office, and this particular uh, section handles evidence that is for the overall mission and responsible of the agency as a section which maintain all property seized by CQA pers personnel and duties and responsibilities are also maintained throughout the border. Next slide. Training, research and development. Of course, training and development is responsible with facilitating, developing and administering evaluation on outsourcing the professional development training needs for CQA employees. Next slide. And this is a new section that we're trying to put together, management information system. CQ is in need of creating an information technology section which will manage the automated information system that the AG agency is pursuing at this time. And we will further discuss this as we go along our budget. Next slide. 
Property and Records Management. This section is responsible for receiving storage accountability of all CQA procured property and records. As you can see, we have to deal with thousands of documentations every year, and this is a very, very important section within the agency. The last division is the Administration and Finance. Next. And this section is responsible for the fiscal payroll and personal records and procurement of supplies for the agency. Next slide. At this time, uh, Senator uh, or Mr. Chairman, I would like to go over some of our accomplishments. And I'm going to start with the deployment of four new drug detector docs that we managed to put together. Uh, when I came into office, I found out that we do have a certified trainer within the agency, and I took advantage of having them train the needed uh, detector dog handlers instead of sending them a violin. We also, if you notice, for fiscal year 2021, that we have seized over 100 pounds of methamphetamine out of borders. That's an increase as compared to fiscal year 2020. We have implemented the electronic declaration form at the airport by digitizing the customs declaration form. It will simplify the customs clearance process of arriving passengers and enable passengers to be better informed of the customs regulations upon arrival. In addition to that, we also uh, created an extension of the container inspection facility property at the port. As you may be aware, uh, we acquired this property, and we have now uh, the, the title for this property, and we've managed to extend the, uh, the, 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 the agreement insofar as trying to build an infrastructure on this property. Moving on, we also created a maritime contraband enforcement team, and this is the team that is also going to be working down at the port within the controlled area to conduct and follow up any type of illegal activities that's happening within the maritime section. Next, we also entered into a memorandum of understanding with the U.S. Postal Service in which we managed to deputize two of our officers to work hand in hand with the Postal Inspection Service. The other accomplishment that we had is that we created uh, and expanded our office at the port to accommodate the increased uh, operation down at the port. Because of COVID-19, uh, we had to uh, restructure our operation to comply with the COVID-19 requirements. Aside from that, we also provided additional manpower to the quarantine uh, facility down at Tumen during the COVID-19 pandemic uh, operation. And lastly here, I also want to mention the beneficiary of a $300,000 grant from DOI, OIA, that grant, and this is in collaboration with Bureau of Planning, that the agency is now working to automate customs and this is the funding source that we're going to be using. And that's our, our major accomplishment for fiscal year 2021. At this time, I would like to refer uh, the, uh, the, the next part of our presentation to our ASO, who will talk about our budget program areas. Good Senators. Good morning. My name is Pilar Carbolito. I'm a program coordinator for the Acting Administrative Services Officer um, for Customs and Quarantine Agency. So at this time, I go ahead and like to go straight into our budget request of $12,292,856. Um, so as you can take a look at this slide, the bulk of our operation expenditures is really for personnel at 88% other expenses at 12. Um, and to the right, if you take a look at, we have broken down the personnel cost of 
$10,863,267. Of that, the expenditures is divided up into the four divisions. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the, um, the biggest d division, which is the inspection and control, um, which takes the bulk of 59% um, of $6,415,936. The next division is the Special Enforcement Division, takes up about 20% of the cost of $2,145,536. And then the next division is the logistics and support, which is around 11% at 1,162,890. And then closing off the fourth division, which is the administration, um, takes up maybe about 10% of the cost at 1,138,935. Next slide, please. So I'm going to go ahead and go into um, the cost of the other expenses, which make up uh, about 12%, which comes up to about $1,429,589. Um, and as you can take a look at that slide, the bulk of our expenditures is really for um, rent at 79% which comes up to 1,132,233. Um, the next expenditure would be our contractual services. Um, comes up to maybe 11% at 151,980. And then next will be our um, utility cost of 87,290. And then um, our supplies at 4% at 58,086. Next slide, please. I'm going to go ahead and go into our revenue sources. Um, and so I know, take, you know, we, we provided a little bit of history from 2016 to 2019. But let me go ahead and just um, kind of highlight fiscal year 2019. Our passenger inspection fee um, collection of 13812000 um, and the cargo inspection fee of 1,380,457, which is a total of collection of 15,192,517. Now move on to fiscal year 20, you'll see the reduction of the passenger inspection fee at 6,373,890. Um, and, and you'll see that where we, we saw the reduction was probably about come third quarter is where we saw the significant reduction. Um, and so the cargo inspection fee is 418494 which closed out fiscal year 2020 of a collection of about 6792385 which moves us into the current fiscal year. Um, we've kind of provided data up until May. And so our collection of 246,876, 246, I mean, that alone you can see the significant um, revenue lost or reduction. Um, and our cargo inspection fee collection is at 193,481, which to, to, as of May, a collection total of 440,357. I, again, you can see the, the significant reduction, and again, that's because of the operations and of the, um, the effect of the passengers coming in. Like, next slide. So I'm going to go ahead and go into our funding source, which is the general fund and the special fund. So at the general fund, you'll take a look at, it's 60% of um, which comes out to 7,335,835. Um, our special fund, which is our customs inspection fund, if you take a look at it, it's 40% of the, comes up to 4,957,021. So if you take a look at the, the chart on the right, it, it really breaks down the cost for, or it, it shows you the cost 
for the general fund breakdown. Um, and with that, um, you know, salaries, of course, is our greatest expenditure at 71%, which is 5212811 And then benefits, which would be the 27%, at 2013155 And then rent um, under the general fund expenditure would be 109869 Next slide, please. So here is the funding source um, with the special fund. And um, again, that was at 40%. And if you take a look at um, the breakdown for the um, special fund, again, a significant amount is 54% of for salaries at 2664000 698, um, and then of course there's benefits at 19%, that's 972,603. You have some contractual services, um, roughly 3% at 151,980. Again, rent, it, we pay a significant amount um, to rent, and it's 1,022,364. For supplies, we're asking for 58,086, and then of course our utilities at 87,290. Next slide, please. Again, as I was saying, rent is a significant expenditure within our budget. Um, our, right now, our total um, rent is about 2,866,944. Um, but if you take a look at how it's broken down, it's all within different um, areas within customs, but the rent appropriation is really what, what we can cover, which is the 1,132,233, which really we're looking at for fiscal year 2022 is, is probably about the third quarter, we'll probably see a shortfall of 1,734,711. And so going back to the um, breakdown, we have, um, so of course at the airport um, cost, and then we have the headquarters, we have our cargo facility, our, our, our customs warehouse facility, the drug detector dog unit facility, and um, down at the maritime, we pay a common area fee. Um, and next slide, I believe that concludes the budget portion of the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That concludes our, uh, our slide presentation. We're open for questions at this time. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Director. I'd like to recognize my colleagues that have joined me this morning. Begin with the Oversight Chair, uh, Senator Talina Nelson. Also, Senator Tello Taidegui joined us. Senator Chris Duenas and Senator Joanne Brown. Mr. Director, I'm looking at your slides and nice, nice looking slides, but I think the math is wrong in some of the areas and I, I just need you, you folks to take a look at it. Um, whenever you identify current staffing, then you put required and then you put deficit. Sometimes the deficit is even more than the required. Okay, so Take a look at it and fix it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the numbers and math game, Mr. Prado, so I'm not gonna. And, the, and then uh, move along on this. I brought this up in the past about customs. The requirement is you gotta inspect anything coming on Guam, correct? Yes. Everything. Anybody entering the airport, you've gotta be inspected, correct? Yes. That's required by law, correct? Yes. Okay, so there's no requirement to rent space at the airport. The airport should be required to provide you the space so you can check the passengers. That's my beef of that, okay? You pay, how much do you pay at the, at the airport for space to inspect? How much do you pay, sir? For, for each passenger? No, for, for, to inspect. Anybody, anything coming in, what is the total cost that you have to pay to, to inspect somebody. And that, that bothers me, and the reason why is because it's in the millions. I see the chief here shaking his head, yes. And 
you know that in order to leave Guam, you got to go through TSA, right? Mm -hmm. I don't believe TSA is required to pay because if you want to get off Guam and you want to keep the airport open, TSA has got to be open. TSA has to clear them. They're the first line of entry going out. Coming in, first line of entry to Guam is you folks. You protect our borders. You're preventing anybody other than immigration. You protect, make sure that, you know, like you listed on your slides, huh? check for drugs and everything else, right? Or any contraband. That's what concerns me is that I would like to, I would honestly like to see Custom have their own building somewhere else and just go there, do the inspection, get out of there and do your, you know, do what you need to do. That's what my, my concern is, okay? That's number one. Number two, I'm very concerned that as you do inspections to freight forwarders and at the port, every now and then they talk about in the newspaper, they find drugs and all kinds of stuff at the postal. And, I, and I, if I'm correct, I think I've spoken to, maybe not you, but to the staff before, and maybe even you and the chief. I'm concerned that at the postal, as you're processing and inspecting and uh, imposing the, uh, the taxes for anybody shipping any products and want the use tax, I don't believe there's any use tax coming in into the, to the mail. There's nobody monitoring that. And I, I'm very curious because Saipan does it and Saipan has a different mechanism. They're, they're a different setup. But it's, there's millions of dollars, my understanding, and I believe, it's coming through Guam. And it's not about, it's not about going after the people of Guam that orders, because I order online. But you know, when I order online and it goes to the postal, I don't pay uh, use tax, but when it comes to freight forwarders, I pay. Uh, it's got to be a balance. It's got to be fair across the board, no matter what. You bring it into freight forwarders or the port or the, or the postal. And I'm just curious if Custom is going to start communicating with the postal. It's not about stopping the mail or even slowing it down. It's about the use tax. That's all, I, that's all I'm concerned about, because as everybody's paying, that's the only area you don't pay. And that's right, Senator, and, and, and the reason for that is that we have no authority to, to, to inspect domestic power shoot coming in from, uh, from I, I, uh, the, I can, the I can US. barely hear you. Can you move closer to the mic so I can hear you, sir? Yes, I, I, as you mentioned, that a lot of these uh, power shoots are coming into the post office, and it's true, but we don't have the exact authority to, to stop domestic mail coming in. And, and we're looking at that, and I'm working with the chairman, our, our chairman uh, at this okay. time, in, in trying to review that type of legislation. Okay, well, Mr. Pareto, I'm not, like I mentioned earlier, it's not about stalling or stopping mail. I know for a fact you can't do that. Nobody can do that. It's federal law. All I'm asking you to do is check and establish maybe a memorandum of agreement with, with the postal because it's about tax, taxes, okay? We're already hurting because of the Jones Act. Why are we hurting now? Because of federal, the federal postal saying, you can't, you can't stop the mail. We're not stopping the mail. All you're trying to do is levy the use tax as required or allowed. That's all, that's all I'm asking. And if you can make it work, great. If you can't, then we move on. There's nothing else we can do. We just, you know, I'm not gonna ask you to dig a hole that you can't get it, get, get out of. Once you able to get in and get out of it, okay? The other areas I like to ask questions on is um, based on the, on the report provided, uh, the government regarding the CARES Act funding, uh, custom received 261,000. Were these funds received? Did you receive 261,000 from the CARES? From the CARES, yes. Of yes? Yes, I attest that we, we did receive uh, that amount uh, okay. for the CARES Act. And, 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 and what that's was for uh, PPEs and supplies. PPE, okay. I, I just, just going to go down the questions. You guys are all familiar with what the questions are, okay? So just, you, you should have the answers already, okay? So, um, since you did receive it, it's for PPE, great. Um, how, being that your um, customs or culture and quarantine inspection service fund is not tracking. How are you adjusting your operation? It's no different as, as the airport not bringing in 
passengers, how are you adjusting your operation to fill, to fill that void of funds? Because I, I would hope the governor's office is going to start bailing you guys out because they got money. Well, the biggest, the biggest concern that we have is, is paying our rent. And we have uh, held back in paying our rent and, and, and still communicating with the uh, front office so far as providing us the additional funding to ensure that rent is covered. But All that's right. the bulk of the, the deficit there. Okay. Are there any prior year outstanding obligations such as salaries, increments, pay adjustment, hazardous pay, overtime, whatever? Are there any prior year or current year outstanding obligations? Do yes. You, you do? What's the total cost? And what, what, how far back? Because, you know, the current budget allows you that if there's money, pay it and be done with it and move on. But because of shortfall, I know you're not able to pay it. So... So yes, we do, we do have um, some expenditures that we're still working with BBMR in identifying um, um, because there are some that are personnel issues. So those are the ones that we are identifying with BBMR and seeing how we can what's, address what's the, them. What's the total? You should already know ongoing if it was 2014, 15, 16. Every year you should have a total of whatever is outstanding. We just, want, we just need to know that because... If there's a way to address it, we can address that and close that book. But if you're going to still be working with DOA, then may God bless you if they ever give you money for it. I'm just trying to be very realistic, you, Mr. Pareto, and, and to the chief and everybody else. We want to help you. We can't help you if you don't give us the information. Do you have an amount as of today? Where are you at? I, I know that we do have outstanding payments for, uh, for uh, overtime with respect to Typhoon YouTube. Wutek, yes. We're still waiting for uh, uh, payment for that. Uh, what's happening is that uh, based on the information that we got from uh, <laughs> Homeland Security, uh, they wanted us to pay that up front and then get a reimbursement. Uh, at this point in time, though, uh, because of our budget shortfall, we, we, we okay. were seeking assistance from uh, the front office with Bureau budget to try and, and allocate some funding to pay that portion of Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pose this to you, Mr. Pareto, and to everyone, okay, is that if you have pay due, then record it, report it, and let us know. I understand when the administration will tell you, can you pay it with what you got today and we'll reimburse you? Ah, well, you know what? Two years already in a row, there's surplus money. That means money didn't get to you, okay? Mm -hmm. The only reason why surplus exists is because if you don't use the money, it becomes surplus. Eh? Okay, it's very simple. And you folks and other agencies could have used the money. Could have paid your overtime, paid your hazardous pay, pay for whatever you need that is due to the personnel. That's my concern. And I, I know my colleagues are probably going to say, Dale, we didn't pay them for the work they did? No, 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 it's not going to work that way. And we're, I don't believe any one of us are going to sit here and say, we'll take the blame. No, 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 we want to find a way to fund you to get it done. Okay, so if you don't have the, the number for each year, you have it for every year. Can you provide that? Because I, I know that my colleagues would like to see that in writing so that we can turn to it when we're discussing it when we head to the budget. Okay. But okay, go, you can go ahead and so, say it now. If so you want. just real, real quick. Senator, I apologize. So the COVID-19 differential pay is, it is a back pay that we do owe the officers. And um, from January to uh, June 19 pay period, um, we're looking at 374,280. You're and owed for what, overtime? Co correct, well, the 10% the temp of the hazardous COVID-19. Okay, you haven't received any, penny for, any money for hazardous? For, so the COVID-19 differential. differential pay, Okay. Um, officers are owed from January, we have not paid from January to June. And just um, truthfully, just um, um, this week, we've established the account. And so we are working quickly with payroll in, in trying to get these, these payments out. And again, that comes up to 374000 280 and senator nelson i believe we submitted that to you okay um, how about going backwards other than just this year i'm concerned of outstanding 
I'm looking at the chief here. If any of his, if any of his staff is owed money, I'd like to know where we're at with that and how much is it. Okay. Do you, do you have that? And if you don't have it right now, just make sure we get it. Correct. We so get it like real soon. Again, if, if the hazard is paid, this is the 10% that's owed from fiscal year 2017 to, to, fiscal, to present. Um, the numbers we're looking at is about 2.9 million. And that's every fiscal year. It's the 10% that we were still trying to. Um, we're, okay, that's that's the hazardous pay. Other than that, it, that's what equates to 2.9. Other than that, do you have any other? Because that's an that's an ongoing issue. Hazardous pay. Once they once they settle, you guys get paid. But is there anything else? Do you have any merit promotion? Any uh, general overtime? Any um, promotion that they never got paid or, you know, uh, detail? I'm we, sorry. We have uh, uh, an existing balance uh, in, in trying to, to pay some of the officers that have been detailed. And, and that amount was uh, for those officers that are, that are currently maintaining that position. And yes, uh, we're trying to work that out. To, to make sure that these officers are paid. Okay, so do you, okay, you identified 2.9, Ms. Carpolino? You identified 2.9 for hazardous pay, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, put that aside. Now, what is the other outstanding? You should, that should be ongoing and should be tallied. I mean, we should be able to know that up front. Do you have that information? Because your oversight chair is very concerned about what is the cost? Because right. that we can we can probably address that one. I'm trying to help you guys. Okay. Correct. <laughs> there's something there that we keep on asking. Yes, and and I I I what we're looking at is there's possibly five. We're looking we're anticipating five employees um, that are owed detail pay, um, and that is um, something that we're working with. We're looking at an average of I'd say about eighty thousand. I apologize, I don't have that number with me. Um, okay. But we, could, we definitely will get that to you, Senator. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close that question and not discuss any further. I just need you folks to sit down. You can work whatever you wanna work with of DOA. We need to know the numbers. At the end of the day, when we go to the budget session and we start talking about numbers, if we don't have the numbers for me to plug it in, don't, the people of Guam is listening. Don't say the legislature didn't try to help you. Because we are going to make effort. I know the chief. I'm going to call the chief and, and, and director later and say, my love fan in, in Numuru. You know, let, let, let's take this close on this loop. That's what my concern is, okay? Moving along. Um, about the rent, you have a significant increase from 374 to 1.1 1 .1 for 2022 office rent. Same question I asked earlier. Do you plan on trying to take that 1.1 million that you normally would get in, hopefully get in the budget and build your own building and maybe that'll be the source of paying for your new building? Chief is shaking his head. I know, I know the director is probably like, you would love to see that. But we yeah. need to see that proposal. We need to see that recommendation. Not just keep asking us money. I need to pay rent. I'd rather you say that the money needs to be earmarked and marked every year until the building is paid for, okay? Because I really, I can see why you're paying rent. And then you mentioned you got your drug detector unit. The dr uh, drug detector dog unit. Yes. Is that, is that good running okay, or what's the status of it? Yes, we, we added four additional drug detector dog handlers, and as I mentioned during previous public hearings, the, the, the challenge that we have with that is that the carriers are, are not allowing uh, us to ship working docks. So that's a hold up on that. There's a moratorium on shipping working docks on board the, the aircraft. And we're just waiting for them to lift that so we can acquire the, the, that, the, the four additional drug detector docks. Okay. Okay, you, you're working that. All right. Um, very simple question. You, you brought it on your presentation. How many total custom officers are needed to fulfill critical needs? Total number. Give me a total number. 
at this point in time, uh, uh, based on, on my discussion with my team, we would like to see a total of 220 officers within the next five years. 200 more officers, what do you need? 220. 220, are those inclusive of the positions you're promoting going up? Yes. Okay, so if you can give us a little breakdown, not a little, because I know it's not little, 220, okay? Give us a breakdown of what you're asking for, what you're hoping to do, so we can take a look on how you want to plan on, on recruiting that. Because we're not okay. going to kid ourselves. There's no long line of people wanting to be customs. To want, because when they go to customs after they're trained, then they go, they go to the federal government, OK? So um, we've got to set up a mechanism that when you hire people and you send them to training, there's got to be a mechanism they can't leave for at least a year or two years. Because the government will go on and pays money to train them. When you do that, you just can't just get up and leave. Okay, and I, the chief is, agrees with me, because you, this, no, they, they work on that with the, the carrier. Other than that, um, I'm going to save my very few questions to, at the end, but I ask the oversight chair, because she's got a, a good list of questions to ask you, and uh, Senator Nelson, then, then after that, we'll be followed by Senator Tello, and then Senator Chris, and then we'll end with Senator Brown. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. Morning. I'll talk a little bit slower than the uh, chair of OFB. <laughs> Calm us down a bit. <laughs> Can you please bring up the drug detector dog unit slide? Okay, while, they're bring, while they are bringing it up, I just want to thank you and the um, all of the people at Customs and Quarantine for um, seeing us through the pandemic and um, being present 100% to protect our community. Mr. Director, on the drug, de drug dog detector unit slide, you have the DDDU leader. You put current staffing at one, you required staffing at one, and then a deficit at one. Can you please explain that? Uh, yes, uh, if, if, if you look at the chart, uh, it's saying that it's, we, have, we need to, to, to uh, have a supervisor. We, we, we need to uh, recruit a supervisor for this particular section. Uh, there's uh, uh, a, a total of four teams. And, 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 and if you look at the, the, the breakdown of the, uh, the, the officers, uh, we are asking for, for, uh, for the, um, the, the, uh, a CQ3 and a CQ2 for, for, for deficit for, for one of the team. And the other team is we're also looking at adding, uh, we, we need to include three additional officers. Right, for this but team. In, this, in this slide you have the DDU leader, current staffing at one, Required staffing means you only need one, but you have a deficit of one. So, um, do you need two DDU leaders? Do you need two DDDU leaders, or are you current in your DDDU leader strength? I don't. I. I. I don't get the question, Chief. Uh, good morning, Senators. I'm Vincent Perez. I'm the Chief of Customs. So when you look at the number, I, I believe that the question that you're asking is uh, current staffing of Please supervisor. Please keep the slide up. Thank you. So current staffing shows one, required staffing is one, deficit will be one. We're looking at uh, pending retirements. Actually, in total, we're looking between seven and ten before the end of the year. Uh, some of our staff are, have been, they're currently around 30 years and counting. So you have a DDDU leader that's going to retire this year? He's got over 36 years <clears throat> of service. Are you training anyone to take his spot? We've got very capable officers already. We've got, uh, we've got an aging force, uh, but I know that whoever comes in to take over uh, would probably be selected from 
uh, former canine handlers. When will you be issuing the job announcement? As soon as we're able to uh, identify the funding and uh, go through that administrative process. Okay, how much money do you need? Well, if you're talking just for drug detector dogs, supervisor, that would be uh, whatever the pay schedule is for class M. Okay. But I, I, I wouldn't be able to give you that number right now. Okay, because if he's going to naturally go through go through the attrition process, right, this year. So you're going to lose a DDU leader and then you're gonna need another DDU leader at probably a lower step. And so it kind of cancels out with the budget that if you're bringing someone new, that you're gonna bring in someone at a lower step because of his experience in years. So if you need additional funding, you need to let the committee know we, that. We will, we will, ma'am. Thank you. Can Thank you, you please bring up the Agricultural Canine Unit slide, please. Okay, here you have, let's take a look at your teams, the Delta Echo, Foxtrot, and Golf team. For the Delta team, you have two current, two required, and two deficit. Why do you have two deficit? If you have two current and you only need two, what's the deficit? Four. Mm -hmm. Are you expecting people to retire this year as well? Our officers to yeah. retire this year as well? Was it a mistake? Is this an error in the listing? Yeah, I'm sorry, I apologize. Uh, those were in error, so we will come up with the correct numbers. Okay, is that for your ECHO team as well? Because I understand the DDU leader why you would put the deficit for someone retiring, right? And so we're trying to see the attrition of, of CQA. So I'm thinking, are you accounting for the attrition? In ECHO team, you have current staffing at two, required staffing at two, but you have a deficit of three. Yes. What we'll do is we'll just make sure we double um, check the numbers because we were still working on the numbers uh, late last night as well. Okay, is that for Foxtrot and go Golf as well? So for the Delta team, the deficit uh, would be zero. Echo team would be zero. Foxtrot team would be one. And Golf team would be two. Right. Okay, Echo team will be zero. Foxtrot team will be zero. Is that correct? Fox Shark team will be zero? Yes. Oh, one. And then golf team will be? Two. Two. Okay, are you sure? Because maybe you added more to your deficit because you needed that in the required staffing. Maybe. Which brings me to the question then, um, what tool did you use to strategize, strategize the structure of your agency's positions in order to accurately staff these operations that you put on, on your slides. How did you come up with this? Yeah. Well, we, uh, we understand the, um, the roles that the, the drug detector dog unit has to play and the agriculture canine enforcement unit have to play. And so what we've done is we've tried to take a reasonable um, uh, approach or practical approach at identifying teams. Uh, and we didn't want to over, overburden uh, our request. So right now with what our funding could hopefully afford is the, the breakdown you see before you. Um, by uh, 
a certain period, we're hoping to grow not just the agriculture canine team because they're going to be incorporated into what is known as the biosecurity division. By law, we're supposed to have established a, a biosecurity division. So this, along with other program areas, are currently at very minimal staffing. So we're looking at growing it. So this is a phased approach. So in a year or two, if we're able to get the, these team numbers up, we're probably going to be submitting a proposal to expand it even more. But we don't want to overburden uh, the budget requests. So this is going to be like a growth phase for not just the agriculture, canine detection, the narcotics detection, but all across the agency's program areas. So you're going to see like growths Growth in phases is how I would term it. Okay. Um, Mrs. Carvalito, to discuss the um, CQA's differential pay, um, we've been asking the governor to ensure that CQA is paid out in a timely fashion and for some reason uh, we were getting information from CQA that that account was empty. However, we received a memorandum. You can clear the slide now. I think our folks in AV are falling asleep. However, we, um, the issue was the governor uh, sent us back a memorandum saying that she has ordered the payment of differential pay upon review and processing of requisite timesheets and document submissions. The Department of Administration and the Bureau of Budget Management and Research are ready to expeditiously process payment. And so we've been working on this uh, to ensure our CQA officers receive the payment that they've already worked for during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, since the beginning of June. And the governor responded in June 24. It is now July 15th. What is the challenge that you are having with BBMR and DOA that you are unable to pay our officers? So at this time, um, actually as of yesterday, we keyed in pretty much everything. So. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're getting to that point where it's, it's going to be paid out. The challenges we came about is really just being able to identify the funding source. Um, through, through the entire COVID, we were able to avail of the CARES Act funds. That um, kind of ran out and funds weren't available. So there was a period there where we could not utilize um, customs funds because we don't have any overtime money or truthfully any surplus money. We, we continue to track, you know, negative. And so working with the BBMR and identifying we needed a funding source. Um, there, there was a notification coming out of payroll saying at this point CARES Act funds were not available to be utilized for the differential pay. So what happened was um, they were instructing departments now utilize your department funds. Um, you know, we both know Customs doesn't have any extra funds to pay that out. So we had to really keep going back and forth and just trying to identify a funding source. So as of earlier this week, a, a um, account was established, funds were loaded. As of yesterday, the staff um, in the office was able to key in um, timesheets and, and work with payroll, going over it, reviewing it, approving it, and we're hoping this Friday that we'll be able to get um, at least phase one out, which is, but there's 13 pay periods to, that we kind of have to go through. But again, the overall amount has been identified working with BBMR and the governor's office, and, and those phone funds are finally loaded. Okay, and that is the amount of? So it, it brings us to the 374,280. Okay. I know earlier we gave you a, a, a lower number, and that was because it was going to carry us until April. Okay. So that was the difference. 
Was there a challenge between the months of January and June 2020 that the timesheets were not being submitted with their original base salary for this additional differential pay? I, I'm sorry. Was there a challenge between January and June 2020 why the timesheets of the differential pay were not being submitted with, pay, with their original payroll? To submit to, to DOA for processing? Yes. Um, at, at this time, it was we, we needed to identify funds, and so we would have to certify, right, that we had the funds, and so we couldn't certify that we, we were able to submit those timesheets right, um, the, because we didn't have the, 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 um, the amount. So did we submit it with our regular timesheets? No, we didn't. I, okay. I can at so to, to certify the funds, right, this is federal dollars, and the CARES Act yeah. came in around that time in March. And so, I'll double check, I don't want to misspeak, but it came in early of, um, January, uh, early of fiscal year 2020. And so I just wanted to ask, it doesn't, um, the issue is not whether CQA had general fund money or revenue money, the issue was getting the, money, getting the proper documentation to the necessary agency to pay them out because this is the CARES Act money. And so when you process their payroll, you would put in their timesheets with it. Not, was DOE telling you that you needed to find your own money within, within CQA after you've been losing revenue of, of, a million do, of $11 million? Yes, that's correct. I mean, we submitted our timesheets, our regular timesheets. We're unable to submit the IPS um, because we received a guidance coming out of payroll that um, we, the CARES Act funds were no longer available to the departments. Last so, year they told you that, last yes, year? Yes, yes. I, I believe we provided documentation um, on that, that that was, that was the guidance we received from people. Can you send us the memorandum? Can you send this committee the memorandum of payroll telling you that, that, that CARES money was not available to you and that you had to look within your agency to pay out this differential pay Sure. That was awarded by the executive order that the governor sent out? Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. So you can send it to the OFB chair and our committee, the oversight of CQA. Thank you so much, Ms. Carbolito. How many people, how many, how many officers are you, have you lost to attrition in the past two years and how many do you anticipate in two years going forward, Mr. Uh, Mr. Director? How many officers do I... Have you lost in the past two years to attrition? And how many are you, do you anticipate moving forward in the next two years? For 2022 and 2023? Well, we, we, we requested for... Uh, on, on, on our budget proposal, we requested... Say again? I'm sorry. Can you speak in your mic? I cannot hear you clearly. Yes, on our, on, on our fiscal year 2020 budget, we did request for additional manpower. Uh, I'm not too sure whether it's funded. Uh, it, it was not funded based on our budget for, for fiscal year 22. But we, will, we, we definitely uh, uh, are, are requesting that just for this uh, fiscal year, that if we're going to recruit, we would like to, to start with at least 50 officers. Say, say, how, say again, how much? 50. 50 officers yes. that you will be losing. Yes, we will be, we, we would like to, to, to request that uh, we recruit at least 50 officers that will, will, will start the, the, the uh, training cycle because it takes 18 months, uh, eight months to, to fully certify these officers. Okay, that's how many you're looking to recruit, but how many did you lose to attrition within the past two years going back and how many do you anticipate in the next two years going forward? Uh, for the fiscal year? I know that's why I'm asking the question. To give you an overview, uh, uh, Senator, uh, just within uh, the last seven years, uh, customs recruited 31 officers within the last seven years.
for the same time period, uh, we, we, we lost 50 officers. So, so, so that's the, the, the trend that we're moving. And just for fi this fiscal year, I think we're, look we're looking at uh, seven officers that will be retiring. And that's the, the, the additional uh, recruitment that we would like to fill to make sure that we, we have the, 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 the manpower that's needed for us to, to man our borders. Okay, so in the past seven years, you have lost 31 officers. Yes, we recruited only 31 officers, and at the same time, we lost 50 officers to retirement, resignation, or other resignations uh, within the agency. Okay. And then you lost an additional 50 officers? Within that time frame. On top of the 31? Yes. Okay. So 31 was lost due to uh, attrition, retirement, and then the 50 officers were lost to? To transfers. Okay. And other resignation. And then now you have seven officers retiring. Yes, we're, we're anticipating losing at least seven officers for this, okay. this school year. And how many cycle, um, when is your next cycle due to start? We, we don't have a, an exact time for, for any cycle at this point in time. Okay, you don't have a cycle at this time. Do you at least have your custo um, recruits vetted? that if you should start a cycle that you have at least 20 recruits that you can pull from? Have you vetted recruits? Uh, we were supposed to, uh, DOA was supposed to start testing uh, for, for, the, uh, for the new recruits. Uh, however, uh, that was placed on hold because of COVID-19. Okay. And then we heard that uh, they have started recruiting for the police. And then they, we were advised that after the police, the fire department would be next, and then customs will, will come in on, 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 on the list for testing. So someone is telling you that you have to wait in line with the other paramilitary agencies? For testing? Is that yes. what you're asking me? Yes. Yes. Uh, according to DOA, uh, they, they cannot accommodate a request for testing because they have to complete the other uh, agencies first. When did you request for testing? This year. This year? Yes. In January? In, in fact, uh, they were supposed to start, start testing, I think, in April okay. of this year. Okay. So how long does that take? Now that we... we um, we tried to streamline the whole process and then the governor implemented a new process to expedite the, um, the requirements for those entering into these paramilitary agencies. It, How it, long is it going it, to take you to stand up? Um, well, I, I, I cannot tell you the, the exact timeline for that because DOA is responsible for testing. Okay. Okay, because I'm asking because if if we need to incorporate additional money for your FY 2022 to give you the money to recruit, that would be very helpful. That's true, yes. Yeah, right? And so that's why I'm asking these questions because I don't see a plan or a request for money, um, but you gave us account of the deficits that you need. So. I understand that there's a shortage, but if you don't uh, inform the committee how to fill the shortage, then it's hard to help you. Yeah. And it's, what's important is we, we need the dollar amount because the oversight chair of um, finance and budget, he just wants the dollar amount. Well, we, we, we do have a breakdown of, uh, of of the, uh, the amount for the recruitment. Yes. I don't have the years, so explain that. Okay, so how much do you need 
to recruit for FY 2022? Um, so what, we're, what we were looking at is we wanted to take care of two things. Okay. Since you're asking. <laughs> First is we wanted to take a look at um, doing some promotions. So of course okay. it's the customs um, supervisor. Um, we're looking at 15 officers, customs officers, three This to, is your promotion. I'm sorry, yes. So let me, let me start with that and then I'll move on to kind okay. of the recruitment. Um, so we wanted to, 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 we're hoping, the director would like to promote is customs officers three to customs officer supervisor. We're looking at 15 officers um, of about 101,503. Then we're, we're looking at moving up to customs officers two to a customs officer three. Um, we're looking at at least 18 officers at 93,193. And then customs officers one to a two. We're looking at 26 officers at 161,921. We're looking at for promotions, um, if we're able to, that comes out to 356,618. So moving from the promotions to the recruitment, if we're looking at recruiting 30 recruits, um, an average of, hold on real quick, 1,204,440. Also, since you're asking, if I can move to my section. Wait, um, hold on, Ms. Carbolita. Recruiting how many, how many uh, officers? 30. 30 officers. Yeah. For yes. FY 2022? For 22, correct, yes. Okay. So, you your know, it's office, understood that this is what we asked office, for and we want, but, you know, I, I think it's in our budget, but it's This zero is what you're 20. asking for now. You said your office, you were going to add something for your office? Well, I really would like to enhance our administrative section, you know, with, with the revenue tracking. I, I truly feel, actually, I'm, I'm new to customs, so I kind of really want to streamline the process and to help us get better numbers and capture um, the data. I'd really like to enhance our office, and I'm asking for administrative staff, and that's just something that I'm looking at. And that would come up to 45,691. But again, I'm throwing it in since you're asking. <laughs> but the officer recruits going back is 30 recruits. Okay. Are you a one-man show? One-woman show? I, for, really, for the budget, the finance side, I am. I am. I, I'm okay. a transfer, and so I am. We don't have an administrative services officer, so I am the ASO. But, um, and then, so I do what I can. We have excellent administrative staff, but they're all clerks. Okay. And, and so, you know, I, I try my best, um, but, but that's what we're working towards. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and then for the, um, so you no longer have any recruits, right? You could, the last cycles, you completely trained, and they're all full-time in the force. Well, actually, we had three uh, officers that had a delay entry for their, for their training because they were deployed. But they, uh, since uh, they have returned back from deployment, we continue their training. And, and for, for out of the three, two will complete the, the, the actual training in September. Okay. And the other one will complete will, and will probably graduate next year because it's still deployed. Okay. So, a total so of, in September they will be completed? Yes. So a total okay. of 26. All right. And then your MIS section, I noticed that's, um, can you please bring up the MIS slide? The new management information section. Slide, please. Okay, uh, Mr. Director, the management information section that you're looking to grow, how yeah. long have these positions been vacant? Yes, I'm going to refer this to my uh, officer, John Rick, to answer that question. Yes, uh, Senator Nelson, uh, John Rick Mendiola with Customs. 
The management information section is, is something that the agency is actually looking at creating. Um, the agency is, is moving forward with um, automating a lot of our services, as well as using automation to leverage our abilities to service the public. Uh, we understand that a new, any type of automation is going to require a section that will handle all the uh, requests, all the issues, not just internally within customs, but also with the public that we deal with. And this type of automation and the requirements to actually have one just for customs is unique because custom never closes. We're always open. Vessels, uh, aircraft, goods, and people are coming in 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So one of our initiatives that we would like to propose is actually setting up an information se uh, section that can handle the anticipated and, and planned um, automation that we're going to be seeing very, very uh, soon. Uh, as you know, we launched the EDF with, along with GVB this year. So that's just one of the systems that we have already have, and we're going to be expanding to our other program areas at the ports of entry. Having a, having a dedicated team that can troubleshoot 24 hours a day, making sure that the systems are always working will be a necessity for the agency moving so forward. So what system do you have right now? Was that, ma'am? What system do you have right now? Right now, we are working um, with, uh, again, we are uh, benefit, we are gonna benefit from the, the, from the Department of Interior. We've already reached out to the Oceania Customs Organization, who will be doing a, um, uh, they're proposing to do a diagnostic assessment on our, be on our behalf to see the, um, to, to have a holistic look at the automation needs of the agency uh, outside of the current air, uh, outside both the airport and seaport. So what systems are you running now? The only system that we have now is the off-the-shelf systems that we have, that all uh, desktop computers have, um, with the exception of the electronic declaration form system that we're using up at the airport that has been, uh, that we've gotten assistance from, from uh, GVB. Okay. Now, you know, uh, another aspect of auto automating, and uh, Ms. Carbolito mentioned, is that it's gonna be beneficial not just for the risk assessments and all the things that we can do for customs, but actually it's gonna give us more information on the revenue streams, the collections, and other things that will assist us, assist the agency in maximizing uh, if efficiently our limited resources in the future. Okay, but you have yet to have this study done. You are waiting for it to be completed, is that correct? Correct. Okay, and so how did you come up with your management information section if the study is not completed? Was this just this? Um... Uh, th this was just looking at, at, at uh, what other government agencies have. This is a, a, at least a framework of what we envision. I know getting input from the professionals on what we would need, we will, we will be able to provide a refined and clear product of exactly what type of positions are, being, are gonna be necessary to uh, move forward with uh, the custom systems that we're gonna have in the future. Okay, because you're asking for a systems programmer a pro and a, a programmer analyst, I think you meant a program analyst, and computer technicians, these are specifics for when you are installing your own network. These are your programs, that you, your systems that are going to be installed most likely will be web-based, right? And that will be contracted out. And so I'm just wondering, um, are you looking to start your own network? Well, again, this is just preliminary uh, positions that we, uh, we, we, were, we were thinking. We understand that getting the professionals on board to let us know what exactly we need. Okay. Then we can provide a more clear plan as well as positions of what we, the agency are going to need to ensure the success of all the custom systems. Okay. Yeah. 
Because if the I, systems that you're going to put in place will not be the expertise that uh, are go going to be required. It will be either contracted and web-based. But um, I appreciate the forward thinking. And so now we know to keep an eye out for your um, technician needs when it comes to information systems. So as soon as you get the required positions that are needed after your assessment is done, if you can let us know, and then we can anticipate that. Is this going to be executed in 2022, the whole system being built in 2022, or is this going to be executed in 2023? The whole, uh, already momentum is moving, actually, this FY to, to uh, uh, the, the proposal for the right. assessment. So as far as getting the system, uh, we would have to give you updates. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I just want to know if the install and uh, operation is going to be in 2022, or are we anticipating for 2023? Uh, again, we'll give you updates, but there is traction on, on, on moving forward with, uh, with the money that was given to us already. Okay, thank you. Um. Mr. Director, how much did you pay in rent in FY 2020 during the pandemic when you saw the decrease in amount of passengers coming in, which also... Um, is correlated to your revenues in your passenger inspection fee, as well as 2021. How did you pay your rent? Were you subsidized by the airport? And if so, how much? Based, based on the, uh, the, uh, the uh, revenue source that we have, we haven't paid our rent. Okay, are you running a, a, are you in arrears in rent or is the airport forgiving you your rent? Well, I've, I've tried to negotiate with the airport and, and <laughs> see what we can do to, to mitigate the problem, but I, I, we, they understand that we don't have the funding to pay the rent but we're still obligated, and, and I'm still working with, with my, uh, the front office in trying to secure the, the, the needed funding to pay the rent. That's the only thing I can say. Okay, because I'm surprised that um, the rent is still anticipated to be, what, $2 million? Is that correct? And uh, early on in the term, they were saying that they were able to drop down customs rent to less than that. So are we, did that negotiation fall through? So, um, so for fiscal year 21, um, the amount that we have available um, mounts to 397,737. Um, and that's how much you paid? No, that that's only how much we have available to pay. So we've, we've again, I've tried to go back to BBMR and we're trying to see how we can request for that additional funds. Like how I, I says, the projection we have for fiscal year 22 is we're gonna be short for rent, which is the case in this fiscal year. Um, the airport did submit a deferral and I totally apologize. I do not have that number, but we're supposed to make our first payment July. So that is something um, we won't be able to make that whole amount that they're asking for, but we'll be able to make something. Um, and, and if anything, it's again, this is how much we have available, which is uh, the 397,737. So we are having to go back and ask um, because we will, we anticipate a rent shortfall we definitely know we're having a rent shortfall this fiscal year. Um, and so we anticipate for, for 22 as well. So you don't know, or you're, in, you're unable to get us the amount that is due in this month? Co correct. I, I don't have that number in front of me. I will get that to you. Okay. Um, so, th so they did ask us if we could make that first initial payment um, this month by the end of this month. So that, that is something we're, we're anticipating um, to do. And like I said, what we have appropriate or available is the 397. 
And how much was your rent in FY 2020, calendar year? January to December, FY, uh, January to December, calendar year 2020. Just calendar. I want to see. Senator, it should be the same amount for 2022. Same amount in rent, which is about the two two point eight million, the two million eight hundred sixty six thousand nine hundred and forty four. So that's how much we are paying in rent. Can you say that one more And I can time? give you the the breakdown um, after I can provide that. Again, it's two million eight hundred sixty six thousand. 944. That's what we're looking at is our total rent expenses. For calendar year 2020. 2020 and 2021. 2021 to date. Per fiscal year. Okay, then we'll go fiscal year because I asked for calendar year. Okay. Okay, calendar. No, no, no. Okay. We'll go by your calculation of fiscal year 2020 and 2021. So that is what's pending. That's correct. Okay. And how much did you pay in fiscal year 2020? For the rent? Yes. So uh, again, I made new transfer to, to customs. And so for the fiscal year 2020, we just paid um, the balance remaining, which was about 1.2. So we just um, completed that payment process. But that was utilized. We had already encumbered the funds. The funds were there. Um, I. I I can't answer why it wasn't paid previously, um, but what we ended up doing is having to go ahead and process that payment. And it was, the balance remaining was like 1.2, around that amount. Was the balance remaining of 1.2 million the prior year for FY19? Did that involve that because you... I, I'm sorry, say that again? You said you paid 1.2 million, right? Yes. For the balance remaining. Was that inclusive of anything backdated to FY19? I don't believe so, ma'am. I believe everything. So again, so we're in this fiscal year, and so it was a fiscal year 20 that they, we still had an encumbrance. We still had a balance um, to pay the rent. And so working with um, Division of Accounts at DOA, we were able to process that. That was already an encumbered amount. That was the remaining, I believe, balance to pay out the rent expenditure for fiscal year 20. Okay. And on top of that, you still have $2,866,944 for fiscal year 20 and 2021. No, for 2021. For Only fiscal for year 21. Yeah, fiscal year 20, we were able to clear. That was the 1.2 that okay. we cleared out. So this fiscal year, we're looking at the 2.8, the 2,866,000. Um, and of that, we only have an appropriation of the 397,000. 737 that will be able to pay out this fiscal year. Okay. So, Thank and so you. we anticipate that shortfall of 2,469,000. Are you looking to decrease the footprint of CQA in the airport because of some way um, to invest your money better? To invest the people's money better? We have, uh, Senator, uh, I have uh, decreased the, the footprint at the airport already uh, by uh, close to $800,000. That's back in 2019. And so at this current time, I don't, I don't foresee any uh, uh, time of reducing any footprint at this point in time because I think we need all that space. Have you thought to relocate your offices to someplace more affordable? We've been, we've, we've been working with that. Uh, one of the issues that I've, I've got right now is that the existing footprint at the airport, uh, I think I can, I can work in, in, in trying to, to, uh, to reestablish and reconfigure the office space at the airport so I can move some of my administrative staff and headquarters where I'm at right now, back to the airport, so that I don't have to pay an additional rent okay. and save an additional two hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars a year. Okay, that, 
Thank you, Mr. Director, because I'm concerned just uh, earlier this week, we had GVB present to us the anticipated tourist arrivals, and for the next two years, we're not gonna see the same numbers we saw pre-pandemic. And so I'm just concerned that um, you're gonna be utilizing a lot of these money, a lot of the appropriation for rent that could probably be mitigated and you could probably use that money that if you're able to success successfully mitigate that cost for rent, you could use it to get assist in getting more um, equipment for our officers and also uh, assisting in getting their promotions completed, um, at least for the current staffing pattern. Definitely, Senator, that's the intention. Okay. And then I remember that you, um, you went into a partnership with the port for streamlining a manifest uh, system. How are we doing there? How's the progress being made? I saw the, um, you guys were meeting at one point like once a week, right? And um, you were doing a really good job pushing forward. So where, where are we at today? Uh, I can answer that one. Uh, we are about 50% already going through uh, the drafting of the rules and regulations. Um, so we are, we are pushing forward with our group. Again, uh, our resources in the agency are limited, but our, our commitment to fulfilling the rules and, and creating these rules is still, um, is, uh, the aspirations to get it done is still there, to push it forward. Because, these, again, these rules crafted by the as mandated by the, by the public law, is something that Customs has sorely needed for so many years. And just perhaps one or two more questions. Thank you and, and good job on your continued push. Do you have an anticipated timeline of when you're going to be complete with the rules and regs? We are hoping to, to complete the rules by, by October. Okay. Uh, and we're going to give it to, the, to, to, of course, to the director first and then go through the administrative adjudication process. Okay. Right. Uh, Senator, can I just say something about that? Yes, Mr. Uh, director. In line with that, um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that we can start the uh, public hearing for the rules and regulation by the end of August. Okay. So that we can move forward with that process. Thank you, director. I want to ask a question about asset forfeiture. What is your current ability to have a shared assets deposited when you forfeit, ask, when you uh, seize the assets? I didn't get the question, Senator. Asset, for, asset forfeiture, Okay. right? You, you have the, um, sometimes you report it as additional funding within CQA. So what is the process now that you have or the ability that you have to deposit these assets? Well, when we talk about asset for forfeiture, we do have asset forfeiture with the, with the, uh, the Federal uh, Department of Justice. And okay. we do receive funding from this uh, particular federal agency. And, and we use that funding to augment some of the, uh, the uh, equipment, uh, training, and other uh, supplies for the agency. Okay. And you're able to have these assets that you share with depart the department um, deposited? Yes. Okay. So there's no issue there with your asset forfeiture? I, I, at this time, there, there, is, there is a um, hold in the asset forfeiture account. Um, we still have access to the account. There's um, some um, accounting and auditing purposes going on. So we're working with federal programs at Department of Administration. Um, they are also the ones in direct link with um, DOJ in ironing out. But we went through some, and, and some of it had to do with some compliance issues um, on, on the management of asset forfeiture. So since I came aboard and since Mr. Pareto came aboard, is they, we've been able to go in, they, working with department administration, had to re, recreate the account, be able to streamline it, and so now the availability of the funds of what we have 
in the account we still have available or, or we still have access to. However, funds um, are on hold as seizures are done, those are on hold and cannot be deposited until we are in compliance. Um, I don't have the full background of that on, on the compliance. That is something we're still working with Department of Administration, um, the federal programs section. Okay. How much is on hold? I, that is not an amount I, I have on hand. Okay. Um, can, you, can you give it to the committee? Can I'm you sorry? Send, can you send that information to us, please? Definitely. I will work on getting that and then I will provide that. I, I only have what's available now and what we can utilize now. But it is a, a reconstructed account just so that all the mix-ups within the past are kind of there. And mm -hmm. so moving forward, we'll be able to, to start fresh okay. and utilize the account and properly. How long, how, long has, how long have we been non-compliant? I believe... Going on, an, I, I, I think it's, it's going to be a year from now. It's, it's about 11 year. months. Say again, Mr. Say again. Say again. What did, how, how long? It, it's almost about a year. A year, okay. Yes. And, the reason, and, and let me just say something about that, Senator. Uh, what happened is that DOJ wrote to, to the agency stating that they're auditing uh, the, uh, the uh, asset sharing program for the year... 2016, 17, and 18. Okay. So when they, they conducted an audit, uh, they, they found some discrepancies that uh, they, they wanted answered. And, and that's what we're doing at this point in time, and we're ready to close that uh, particular request. And how long is it going to take us to be compliant again? Well, uh, the only thing that, that's pending right now is that DOJ wanted to, to find out why is it that the government of Guam uh, audit did not show that they've included the DOJ asset sharing grant as part of the government of Guam audit and they wanted an explanation as to why. Okay. So we work with DOA insofar as getting with the, uh, the, the auditors and, and responding to that issue. And that's where we're at with that and hopefully that we can uh, mitigate that by this week. Okay. Are we looking to, I understand that we have a lot of, we, um, we lose a lot of our officers for federal jobs. Have we been discussing, has there been any discussions within CQA for pay parity? For fed, as, as they do in federal. No. So <clears throat> there's currently a bill uh, that is out that talks about the creation of a law enforcement force structure. And in addition to that, there's a tie in with uh, evaluation of pay and possibility of restructuring it. And so the ideas that we're throwing around is that if, if we're able to create a force structure that, that identifies separate uh, levels of increased responsibilities, like as you begin your, your career, for example, everything is hands on training. We can create a uh, career ladder where it's non-competitive up to right below the, the, the rank of supervisor. And then you have a supervisory tier, which is one or two levels. And then at the top tier would be your, your uh, agency uh, heads of organizations in the classified service. And so what we can do is we can take that and possibly take a look at uh, pay schedules identified like with the federal government. In the federal government, they use what is called a GS schedule. And normally what we find, or traditionally what we've been finding is that officers who leave our agency with just a, a, a skill set of four years qualify for a GS-9. And so in realizing that these are the things that impact our capability to retain officers, if we were to look at possibly maybe mandating an adoption of a federal pay schedule in line with that particular GS schedule, but then convert the, the, the GS schedule to LEO 1, from LEO 1 all the way up to LEO 15, which matches the GS schedule. Um, I would think we would go a long way to, towards creating some sort of incentive for our officers to, to stay. Okay. So we've been in discussions 
I, I understand that you have a vision, right? And, and that is part of the vision. But what is stopping you from doing the assessment or getting the assessment done? You don't necessarily need a bill that authorizes CQA to go and do this kind of study. Um, uh, barring the, uh, or uh, although the bill is, is still in its process of uh, going through its wickets, um, we've already started to identify uh, what a force structure could look like, what the potential uh, conversion is from the law enforcement pay structure now into a GS schedule. You started to perform a study yourself? I've started collecting information, so in anticipation of, of what may transpire, we'll already be ahead of the game as, as opposed to waiting for uh, some sort of... Uh, what uh, formula did you use to create this? Um, I'm use, what I'm doing is I'm taking a look at a model of, that the military uses readily, which is their enlisted force structure, which uh, breaks down uh, levels of responsibility from the very beginning as a, as a trainee during basic training and then accruing levels of responsibility as you go through. So, Okay, it's, I understand that, but that's so, you, but what real study has been, has been done? Just because you gather data and you make a recommendation to reorganize, mm -hmm. that does not mean that that, that recommendation has been properly studied and vetted. There is no study currently at this time, if that's what you're asking. Okay, are no you looking to study. perform an actual study? No. Because you don't need a bill. I see that that bill shows you that you're gonna reorg and that's great. But if you just reorg without a, a real, real concrete study mm -hmm. done by human resources personnel, federal, federal parties, you know, it's just, that's my question. Yes. Are you anticipating the study? Or we you're just thinking get, that the bill yes. is going to pass and we're, okay. But a proper study must be done. Yes, and that's And understood. then that's when your bill comes out saying this is in accordance with the study that needs to happen. Okay. Got it. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Senator Nelson. Senator Tello, do you have any questions or comments for the panel? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll try and make mine brief. Um, what I'm really concerned about, uh, first, thank you so much for being here. It's always good to see you guys. And, and I want to thank you, too, for always taking my calls. You're one of the agencies that do, you know, when we have any questions or ask to be accommodated, especially for a tour of the facility. And I want to thank you for, for that. However, I'm very, very concerned um, with uh, regards to the funding for customs. Um, especially for FY21. Uh, we both discussed this to um, director about uh, the shortfall, you know, in the special funds for customs. And um, right now it was anticipated that uh, in April, the shortfall is about 2,196,563. Now May, we received the CRER report and the shortfall in special funds for customs and quarantine is two million three hundred thirty-two nine four four ninety-nine four, which is increasing. It's not going down. So my question is, how are you going to adjust to these shortfalls because you are funded through the special funds? What have you taken, you know, austerior measures you've taken into place right now? Are you receiving all your allotments? Or? Well, well, Senator, yeah. let, uh, let me just say that, yes, we've, we've identified that that's, that's the challenge that we have right now. And, Where are you uh, going to make the cuts? And the only, the, the only uh, uh, solution for us at this point in time is to request for the administration to, to uh, provide some sort of additional funding for the agency. Uh, a lot of this shortfall is based on, 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 on the projection of the special fund. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the projection for fiscal year 2021, the projection was for customs to collect 
about four point something, uh, four million uh, uh, for fiscal year 2021. For at least 4.1 million. And if you look at the, uh, the trend right now, uh, just this year alone, uh, even GVB has come up with the, the projection that the total number of passengers that we're, we're looking at by the close of this fiscal year is about 45,000. So, so there's no way that we can meet the threshold of that 4.1 in, in special fund appropriation. Now that's the same challenge that we're looking at for 2022. Because for 2022, the projection is that Customs is going to collect 4.9 million uh, for, for fiscal year 2022. And if you look at the way the economy is moving right now, uh, even again, G GVB's prediction is that uh, we're going to be seeing roughly between 70 to 130,000 passengers for fiscal year 2020. Uh, if I was going to do the math on that based on the service charts, I'm looking at just collecting at least a million dollars. So we're going to be seeing the same problem again for, for fiscal year 22. And, and that's the challenge that the agency has, is we know that there's a declining number of passengers coming in, and, and we have to plan for that. Uh, we have to be more fiscal uh, uh, responsible for our budget. But even at that, uh, we have made that clear to, to uh, the administration that we will continue to be faced with this type of problem. So, Ike, where are you going to be cutting? I mean, this is, this is substantial. You're looking at a $3 million shortfall by the end of this fiscal year. A $3 million shortfall. And, um, by the way, do you receive any funding from the Tourist Attraction Fund at all? No. Okay. I just want to make sure. That's good to know because it's a double whammy. But yes. do, where are you going to make the cuts in this physical year right now, just to get by. I mean, we're talking about 2022, I understand that, but you're in trouble right now. Right now you're in trouble. Yes, we're, we're, we're barely meeting our budget needs for this fiscal year. So and where are you gonna cut? The way I look at it, there's no place for us to cut right now. What we need is some sort of uh, an infusion uh, mm -hmm. with uh, uh, a supplemental uh, And have uh, you talked to the administration? Yes, they're aware of that. Bureau of Budget is aware that we're going to be seeing a shortfall. And are they going to help you guys out? I will say yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that, the, I don't know if the oversight chair, he usually does mention how much yeah. money that the legislature and the ARP money that we were going to give to you know, each agency. And for customers in quarantine, it was $25 million. I don't know if he mentioned that. Usually he does. I don't think I heard it, but... You know, this legislature has, has requested that. So I don't know. Of course, the governor has the ultimate authority to do so. But, you know, it's obvious that there is an issue. There's always been an issue with funding and, cu and customs, you know, but even more so, there, there's a problem here. And, um, you know, with all these hiring, additional hires, and it, it, it may be very difficult. Maybe that's the reason why in FY 2020, you had 150... Um, employees that were, these are not, these are classified officers, 152, but then in FY 2021, it went down to 136, and then, um, yeah, so the same, same as again in one, FY 2022, 136, and you're saying you need 200 plus, uh, 220 needed officers, so, you know, you're growing your, your fleet, but your revenues are going down. You know, so it, it's quite alarming here. Um, you know, I, I know it's been brought up. It's brought up several times, even when I would talk to some of the officers about where customs is going and how they're going to be able to adjust every year the issues that they have with shortfalls, that it may even look at going to federalize, you know, customs. Because the federal government which oversees all borders, you know. And I think Saipan has the same, you know, federal government oversees Saipan as well? No. No, it's, no. it's their own, um, okay. Yes. Immigration is, is federalized in Saipan. Yeah. Has, has Customs and Quarantine put together a presentation to the government to look at 
federalizing customs so that you, be, you would be availed to all the, the amenities and technology, especially technology, to connect with each other on other federal um, borders, you know, in the, in the U.S., all the U.S. H have you ever put together a presentation to show what would happen if Guam were to federalize customs and quarantine? Give it no. to, turn it over to the federal government? No, we, 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 haven't, we haven't made a presentation on that issue. Okay. Well, we might have to, if we keep going down this road and if airport's not willing to, you know, take care of your rent and areas that you're sitting at, you know, we've, we've got to find a solution here. You know, our borders are, need to be protected. And um, though you guys are doing, you know, such an excellent job at what you're doing, but with little resources, it makes it difficult for you. Definitely. Very difficult for you. And what really hurts me even more is to find out these officers are not being paid hazardous pay that's due to them, differential pay that's due to them, Six months, it could be longer if I'm not mistaken. I'm just looking up from January, uh, as what your ASO had mentioned, just January now to uh, the um, hazardous pay or the 10%. Can imagine how much more is owed to these officers? Are they getting interest for not getting their money? Uh, do they get interest if, they, if they're owed that money and they, it's been six months to a year, they haven't got it, do they get interest? I don't think so. Okay, well, that's a shame because they have bills to pay too. Use tax. I, I appreciate, you know, um, Ike, I really appreciate your accomplishments here in 2021. However, use tax, and I know the oversight chair brought this up, and I appreciate you providing us a, a tour of the facility in both airport as well as port to discuss how can we capture these use tax and we know that a lot of it comes through the mail. However, in your accomplishments, I was hoping to see that you would have a task force, see that you have a, a, a group working with Revin Tax because a lot of times what's happening is you can't um, hold these packages that come in like through the airport. You have to release these products that are coming in. And if they're owed taxes, you can't hold it. You have to just make sure that they go to Revin Tax and pay the bill. But on your end, you don't know if this is followed through at all. And this was an issue that you brought to our attention. And I was hoping to see maybe uh, a task force put together on how to address the inability of being, not being able to capture these used taxes of products coming into, especially the airport. So hopefully, you know, we can get some kind of group together. I mean, we, we sat and talked to you months ago about this, and I, I don't see it on the accomplishments there, because we're, we're looking at revenue, which is something that you guys desperately need in order to con continue to do your job. And again, my hat's off to every custom agency out, uh, officer out there who are trying very hard and, and still doing it, knowing that some of them are not being paid what they justly deserved, or even, you know, money that was told they were going to get and didn't get it. Do you always, by the way, do you always um, rely 60% of the general fund for revenue sourcing um, and 40% special funds? According to the pie chart that you provided us, it says here that 60% um, of your source funding is uh, from the general fund and 40% is from special funds. Is that yeah. Yeah. every Based year you, you rely on that? Historically, ma'am? Based on your pie chart? Historically? I'm sorry. Is that historically where where where? Yes, where, historically. No. No. No, but th those so, are those are all because of the current uh, pandemic situation that we're in. Okay, that's what I was wondering because usually you rely mostly on special funds than yes. you do general funds. Okay. Yes. So this proposal is quite different. Thank you for clarifying that. You know, I was. As in years past, we would normally majority of customs funding 
was to the revenues that we generate through the operations at our airport and air cargo. And of course, because of the, yeah. of the reduction, the great reduction in, in, in uh, airline activity, tours coming in, you know, we, we actually saw, we were actually one of the first government agencies to see the reduction in revenue. Right, right. Well, I've been tracking this. I'm very concerned with customs. Been a great fan of yours, you know, trying to assist you because of the struggles you've had every year, you know, getting funding and what you're dealing with, in, in, especially at the airport, on rental. But, you know, something needs to be done and to ensure that all your officers are, are being taken care of. And I'm glad you uh, mentioned that because I was going to say, <laughs> you cannot survive on special funds. You're going to have to dip into the general fund. So I thank you so much for doing what you do with very little resources, and then you're going to have to deal with the shortfall, which I, I hope you get the support of the administration and get some money in there, Ike, you know, stand by that door and keep knocking. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But, but most especially, you know, the first funding that you get is to pay these officers what they do. Their hazardous pay as well as their uh, differential pay that are due to them. Don't let them wait. I've heard some agencies are like in a year of not paying their employees. These officers are very important. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Senator Chris Drainus, do you have any questions or comments for the panel? Sijus Masi, Mr. Chairman, and yes, uh, just a couple. Uh, good morning, uh, Director Pareto, and money to your team. Thank you for being here. Mr. Pareto, did, have you requested any funds from the American Rescue Plan to the governor's office? Uh, we, we have uh, 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 tried to put together some sort of plan uh, uh, so that we can at least uh, submit it to the front office. Uh, but one of the, the biggest thing that we're looking at is not only from the recruitment standpoint, but we are very concerned with trying to secure funding for our container inspection station down at the port that we're looking to, to construct. And, and, and hopefully that's one of the, the priorities that I'm looking at is to, to make sure that uh, we avail ourselves with, with, with the, uh, the, the funding for that because it's, we, we just extended the, uh, the law insofar as trying to, to build the infrastructure that's required for us. So yes, we have been establishing some sort of uh, communication with the front office uh, with respect to the, uh, the rescue plan, but we haven't received any uh, word in, in so far as the actual allotment that the agency is going to be provided. So in that request, have you requested any funds with regard to um, for personnel, given the fact that you've been essentially devastated uh, throughout fiscal year 2020 in, and going into 2021 because of your special fund uh, uh, deficiencies. And this is directly related to COVID. So have you made any requests for um, personnel or, or to backfill your budget with regard to these needs? Uh, uh, yes, uh, we, we have indicated that uh we, we, we were hoping that we can get a, a funding to recruit officers, uh, uh, especially in, in, in increase our FTEs. And, and we're just hoping that, uh, you know, they will re respond to our requests. But definitely they are aware that we would like to, to, to see uh, an infusion of funds so that we can uh, expand our, uh, our recruitment process. Uh, not only that, but growth. Uh, promotion to our officers. We need some funding source from that level too. So, but again, uh, we haven't received uh, any type of information in so far as how and, and, and the amount that we're going to be getting for that rescue plan. And that's did, about the only did thing. Did you I request a specific amount, Chief? Uh, did we no, we, we, we didn't request a specific amount. We, we identified some of the, the areas that we, we would like to have uh, uh, funded by that. Okay, so Chief, um, I'm sure it's probably going to be um, uh, not only because of the governor's office receiving the guidance. Uh, the governor's office has been clear that um, interim comments for American Rescue Plan is 
um, I believe due in the next couple of days and the closeout period for the usage of those funds. I'm, I'm saying this because uh, on the invitation of the congressman, several of us were able to view um, an updated report and while I do not advocate this for a number of line agencies that have been funded thoroughly through their general fund appropriation, clearly customs is affected yes. in the top, one of the top program areas of those affected by COVID. And now we're talking about manpower operations and we're talking about uh, shortfalls. So I highly encourage you and your team, Pilar, to, to really put that number together, not only for your current fiscal year, but for the next fiscal year, because this is certainly one of the areas where we would look at personnel and other issues, because it is clear that that is the dependency that you have on those funding source, for sources for uh, passenger arrivals and the like, that fills out your budget. So I'm highly encouraging you to uh, get those numbers together uh, so that you can do that going forward. The other thing is, uh, Chief, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned, um, and, I, and I'm not trying to <laughs> get in the middle here, but I, I think, Chief, I want to get this from you. I, I think that, um, as our oversight chair mentioned, Customs should not be standing in line when it comes to this issue of preparing uh, for, the, for the recruitment. Ensuring that the testing and establish of a listing is done uh, so that you can move forward. And I'm going to state my reason why, but Chief, can you, can you, uh, have you submitted a plan and at least been aggressive in terms of, of ensuring that that this, this establishment of a listing and this testing gets done so that you are ready to recruit when you have the funding? Thank you, Senator. So internally, we've been discussing the way forward and how we're going to uh, augment the field because of the pending retirements, uh, current challenges with attrition uh, and other issues that have presented themselves regarding the way forward and how to uh, strategically reorganize the agency in order to be able to really operate in the 21st century. And so we've actually put in requests for, of course, for recruitment. One of the things that we, we have to also consider is that there are impacts even as you start to try to recruit. You can recruit all you want, but when they come into the agency and it's not what they thought it would be or they get offered um, for doing the same type of work, double or triple their salary, a lot of them leave. So in, in doing an internal uh, research on the number of officers who have joined the agency for the past uh, almost 30 years up to now, it's almost like, I think it's around 27 or 28% of our, of our officer force have left us to join the federal government. I would urge you to look around and take a look at the federal entities that we have before us today, and you'll see that many of the officers who have left are currently holding uh, medium to high level positions within these uh, uh, federal entities. Now, going back to the question of are we planning for it? Yes. Now, the challenge is further impacted by our capability to fund these positions. So if there's no funding, even if you put it in, one of the things that we will get back is that if you don't have any certification of funds and you turn in a request for GG1s to fund 30 to 40 or 50 recruits, we're not gonna, we're, it's just not gonna go through any process. And we've done that before. In previous administrations, I can attest that we have turned in GG1s and we were under the impression that we will move forward uh, but because of the projections reflecting the way they were at that particular slice of time, the, these positions didn't go. And so to further that impact is also promotions. It's been quite a few years since our officers have been promoted. And it's very embarrassing as an agency if we, if we retire people and they retire at the rank of a customs officer one. We're trying to redesign our career structure in order to do that. 
But if you don't have enough people coming in, despite your best efforts to try and put in recruitment, a lot of it just boils down to like funding. So if we're able to get guaranteed sources of funding to guarantee cycles per year, I'm pretty sure that we would have a much more developed plan to be able to fill these gaps. So Chief, you know, I, 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 maybe things have changed. And I, and, I, and I appreciate your discussion because the common theme throughout law enforcement now is that the pay scale and the federal jobs that are available at this time is now the common theme. We're hearing it from DOC, we're hearing it from GPD, we're hearing attrition based on that fundamentally, okay? So I got you there, Chief, and I'm with you, and I'm, I'm tracking in terms of what bills are in the pipeline. My problem is you're bleeding officers. You need, you need the basic entry level. Customs, from what I understood for the longest time, was the Cadillac. I lost so many youth affairs recruits that would come through and I knew what they were doing. That was their front door. Yes. I would ask them, stay for a year, give me a year. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'll sign this GG1 if you give me a year because I know where you're going. Oh. So what I'm saying, Chief, is, and I got you, but the thing is, is that at your manpower levels now and what you've lost, with your promotions, you're going to need the guys on the bottom. And, 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 and the reason why I'm going down this road, Director, you have under your accomplishments, because we know right now the scourge of methamphetamine in our community is something that we need all hands on deck. You've got 100 pounds of methamphetamine seizure so far. That is ex excellent, okay? But when I go back and I go through what our oversight chair was going through in terms of the the, the deficiencies on contraband enforcement team, on task office section, and drug detection unit alone, when you combine those positions, that's 23 officers or 23 individuals in deficit to those staffing pattern. If you promoted or internally had the capability to do that on the levels that are up for promotion, that alone covers almost a full cycle of what's needed right now mm -hmm. to backfill those jobs of the entry-level positions. So that's all I'm saying. I, I, I just think it's not the right answer from DOA saying, we got to hold off on you. We can't test. We can't. You already know that even if you went and qualified 50 officers right now that tested out and were ready to be recruited by customs, you might get 30, 40% of those. Others might go somewhere else or by the time they've tested out and qualified, they already took a job at Navy Security, Airport, Air Force, and all the other jobs that are coming along the pipeline due to the buildup. One only has to go on the federal job offerings on a daily basis to see, and I, that's why I'm concurring with you, Chief, that there are a lot of offerings and there's going to continue to be a lot of offerings in the security divisions and safety divisions that are civilian jobs due to the expansion of the military footprint on Guam. And or those, if their family situation exists because of COVID and everything that has happened, the high cost of living on Guam, going somewhere else, because say their spouse or other person in their family has lost their job and it's so attractive to relocate. I say this, Chief, because that is the importance of the pipeline. That is my prayer to you, that alongside fire, alongside police, I, I have a very close, you know, dear person in my life that just graduated combat medic. When he went over there to check on the fire, they're sending him down to the police, saying, fire hasn't opened that second cycle yet, but that this is how hard it is right now and I know what you're up against in terms of recruiting officers mm -hmm. so it's competitive so if it's competitive I'm just saying what about let's let's be equal on the pipeline because to me and I'm gonna work with the chairman on this and the oversight chair you are one of the high profile agencies to get this bailout funding over the next minimum of two fiscal years because that is ARP related. Yes. 
to use yes, our finu tomoru to the max. And it's not just because of the fact that, and then you are the one night that's going to be part of the bridge because when tourism numbers come, start coming up, that's where your funding comes back. I agree. So that's all I'm asking is that the sense of urgency needs to be here. We're here to support you. And Chief, I know, historically, it's always been tough. You guys have been asking for the funding, but I just see it right now as critical levels. And you're on the front lines of methamphetamine. You're on the front lines of invasive species. You're on the front lines, you know, of, 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 of really making sure that, that, that our rebuilding of tourism and everything is there, a key component. And that's why I just wanted to focus on this issue. Chief, please work with us, you know, director, please work with us that, that, that this has to be something where you've got these numbers drilled down, Pilar, and you've got this staffing pattern drilled down, because I know many of us here are going to push hard for that. Thank you for 600 that. 600 and some million dollars, you know, if we're talking about 8, 10 million to bridge you, you know, 5 million a fiscal year to, to make sure that you can do it, I, I don't know why we're not going to do that. You are serious frontliners, as well as the challenges of the law enforcement. And we'll work on the other issues, Chief, because that's law enforcement wide. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Duenas. Senator Brown, do you have any questions, ma'am? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I certainly concur with uh, Senator Duenas' comments. I mean, it's fairly obvious because of the, you know, significant decrease in your revenue base as a result of your funding source that, uh, you know, there would be an expectation on our part that the administration obviously would prioritize uh, your agency to offset the, the impact of, of the decrease of visitors coming to Guam. Of course, it's a means of which you receive your revenue to include inspections that are conducted by your agency. So it's, it's our hope that, uh, you know, at some point soon that the administration will announce publicly how they're looking at distributing those funds. Uh, but we should anticipate certainly that, that your agency uh, would receive those funds to offset what we obviously see is directly impacted as a result of COVID. Um, how are you currently making payroll now with these decreased revenues? How are you meeting your current obligations, cash? How are you, how are you addressing that within your agency now as a result of the decreased revenue coming in? Well, uh, we've, we've been uh, going over our budget and we've been uh, uh, prioritizing what we need to do. Uh, it, it's either to pay the officers uh, uniform uh, stipend or buy gas. So we, we have to, to just decide what is the priority, and that's, that's what we've been doing. We've been cutting down on everything uh, based on, on, on the budget allocation that we have with this fiscal year, and even at that, uh, we're still struggling. No, but I understand. I mean, the, the amount you have coming in is such a significant drop. How are you currently making payroll? I mean, is the administration just, are they just providing the additional funds or transferring additional funds to customs to offset? Well, actually, if you, if you look at the budget, we, we've got for fiscal year 2021, we had a total of 7.3 something, 7.3 million. And, and that in itself uh, uh, was geared towards the, the salaries of, the, uh, of the, uh, the, the, the manpower allocation. Uh, when it comes to the, the, the remaining uh, funding source, uh, we just have to, we, we have cut nearly 50% on everything that we have right now and, and we're tracking that uh, hopefully uh, on a case by case basis, uh, we're barely meeting some of the requirements that uh, we, we need to fulfill. And I, as I mentioned to the chairman here, uh, we haven't paid rent. We haven't paid rent since COVID-19 because we don't have the funding and they understand that no, we no, don't I, I understand, but I'm looking at these numbers and the decrease is so significant. I mean, you dropped off such a steep cliff yes. that I'm just curious, how are you actually making payroll? I mean, you have here in the listing of revenue yes, yes. sources just for your passenger fees of two, 279,000, or yeah, 279,000 if I'm reading that correctly, right? As of May, that's the figure we have here. Uh, cargo, 274,000, I mean, 
that's not a lot of money to look at your staffing pattern. So how are you, how are you surviving? How is that adding up? Sure. So, Senator, um, looking at our fiscal year 21 budget, um, again, the priority was, like the director says, is he had to prioritize. And, you know, the officers are, are, are very much needed. And, and so that's his priority. So between salaries and benefits for fiscal year 21, that's the priority. But being, so I, that, I, I that's, under, where, that's where all the funds I, are, excuse are me. expended. I, I understand that. <laughs> I, I got it. My point is looking, unless there's any other revenue sources Customs is getting, how are you sustaining payroll? So that's what I was trying to get at is that we continue to, to meet payroll is based on what we have. So the budget that was appropriated, that's, what the, that's where the priority is at. Um, uh, at this time, we don't, other than if, if there was overtime, that's where the shortfall would be. But priority is budget. We are making salaries. We are paying the salaries. So are there the other officers. sources of revenue besides the amounts you have listed on revenue sources on your presentation on this last column? Is there more money than what I'm seeing here that Customs has available to it? Other revenue sources not listed here? That adds up to four hundred forty thousand. Well, if, if, if you look at the revenue source, uh, we do have the, uh, the the passenger service fees, and also right. we we have the cargo uh, fees that we charge up at the airport and down at the port. Right, that's what is listed so, here. But it says as of May twenty twenty one, it's four hundred forty thousand. So, is there more money than this? Because I I don't know how you make that operation if this is all there is four hundred forty thousand, so far. Am I reading that wrong? No, you're reading that right. Uh, I, I, as I mentioned, uh, we've been working with BBMR to, to, to at least address some of our concern and move money around uh, insofar as short folks are concerned. Uh, at any time that we can't meet payroll, then we communicate with our analysts. Well, then we that's my point. Them. Are they transferring funds into customs to sustain you to meet payroll? Because I can take a few officers and count 10 in my hand and can eat up 440,000 is my point. I mean, that, that's such a significant drop in your, your revenues to sustain just even your existing staffing pattern. I mean, that, that wouldn't last very long. So, I, I'm, you know, of course, my logic is telling me that they would have to be transferring funds, but are you aware of funds being transferred into customs to offset the significant decrease in your revenue? Yes, and, and, and I've That was made... the question from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've, I've, I've made requests to transfer funds to cover some of the expenses. You've made requests, but, but do you know if funds have so far been, been transferred to customs? Are you aware? For, for payroll, for salaries and benefits, yes. Do you know how much has been transferred to your agency? So, so again, in the beginning when the appropriation, whatever, whatever is appropriated and we've, we've put in, which is the 10,789,583 10, is currently available for salaries and benefits for this fiscal year. How is your... So is it available? How yes. do your... Well, at least last round I was here, there was an expectation that customs would survive on its revenue stream. Is there a separate uh, appropriation out of the general fund that was made last budget year for you? No. No. I don't think so. I don't. I don't. No. I don't. I don't. Okay, so I if don't your revenue stream that. is from your, your, your fees and your, the inspection fees Correct. and cargo fees. Correct. Um, and obviously we see from the numbers here a significant drop of revenue as a result of, of you know, decrease of passengers and coming into the island. How much funds then have been transferred to customs to, to be able to um, address, even, even if it's just your payroll, where is the source of funding coming from? Because these numbers don't show it's coming out of these fees. If I may. <clears throat> well, we were using the general fund subsidy that we got Okay. From, from our budget, which is seven. How, how much was that subsidy? Se seven. Yes. 7.3. So 7.3 plus here. Yes. For fiscal year 2021. And that so far has been adequate just to meet at least your payroll and your other operational cost? Yes, majority of the, of, of the, the, the funding from the general fund is for 
salaries. Just for salaries. Yeah. And, and when do you know when did the general fund start offsetting your revenue stream? Because the intent was to be solely self-reliant. Uh, ever since the pandemic, uh, that was 20... So last year. 2020, I think. So it just started it's last year. It's going on two year, years then. now. Well, I, I, I concur with my other colleagues. I mean, we, we certainly look forward to seeing if the administration will prioritize your agency because, I mean, that if that's money coming out of the general fund, I mean, that's a sinking ship. At least yeah. in the next few years, uh, you know, without this continued infusion of federal funding and even that structure I'm concerned with nationally, uh, where we are financially as a country with the amount of infusion the federal government is putting in and how stable our whole financial economy is going to be as a result of it. I mean, money's flowing now, but it has to come from somewhere, and everything that goes up has to come down, right? So we need to be aware of that. Okay, so you've got a, you've got a general fund uh, transfer of funds that uh, have put you where you are currently. What, what, are, what are you not addressing in your operations now? Because of, obviously you're trying to meet your payroll demands. What, what are you not able to address? I've heard the comments on your rental. Yes. Are there any key needs you have that you're not able to fund at this time as a result of the limits on your budget? We, we have several uh, things that, that uh, we need to address. I'll have the ASO go over that. So fuel cost for this fiscal year, fiscal year 21, uh, we're looking at fuel cost of okay. 24,000. Okay. Um, we have not paid our fuel cost. Um, our vehicle maintenance, we're looking at 18,000. Okay. Um, office supplies, just to buy specifically paper, toilet tissue, paper towels, copier paper, um, and then our uniform allowance. We have not paid out our uniform allowance for fiscal year 20. Um, again, come, if you look at what's available right now, it is 400 in our budget. It's strictly salaries and benefits. So have any CARES funds been transferred at all since the pandemic to your agency to assist in your operations? So for CARES, and that's what I was getting at, why we weren't able to do differential is in the CARES Act funds, the funds that was given to the department was strictly for PPEs to, to, okay. to equip the, so for the overtime, the differential, that cost coming from the CARES Act, that was straight from the CARES Act funding, which would be processed, I, I believe it's department, uh, government-wide through DOA. That was the reason why there was a point where um, DOA says we are no longer paying out. That's, that's how it, it, it started. We, we never had um, uh, overtime cost or personnel cost to pay out with CARES Act. We only received funds for PPEs. Well, then that obviously puts you in a very dire situation. So, gosh, I'm hoping you're one yes. of the, the front of the line because you can't. At some point, the fuel companies aren't going to keep giving you fuel without compensation or any of these other things. And, you know, your Agreed. officers certainly are in a position to sue your agency for non-payment because that's the, those, there's an expectation that when the service is provided, there's only a short time frame for the government or as any employer you know, to pay their personnel for the work that they provided. Uh, you know, that's quite, I'm surprised this hasn't been addressed because goodness, you know, from all the financial reports we're getting, you know, everything's glowing and rosy and wonderful. And yet, you know, where the rubber meets the road in, in terms of direct need, uh, especially on an agency with your operation to hear that you're not getting funds for fuel. Uh, I mean, I understand the, the rental issue. I mean, that's a big, a large amount, but I mean, 24,000, 20,000, 18,000, I mean, those are, for the average person, a lot of money, but for an agency of your size and operation, it's not a significant part of your budget. I'm surprised that those things have not been funded because that's, those are critical needs and you don't want your vendors to say, you know, we've been extending you and we can't keep extending you and you don't have the fuel and things that you need. So I, I'm a little concerned with regards to that. On the issue of your rental, and, and that was an issue for us at the port that we were annoyed with when I was there because you were paying nothing and we were carrying the bill. We were paying the power bill and the water bill and you're paying the airport a substantial amount of money to do the exact same thing, to set up your office and, and do your operations. Uh, and there was the argument that, you know, customs charges fees. You're not, you're not uh, you know, you're receiving revenue, uh, you know, for actually doing the operation that you do. But the facility that you're in up at the airport is privately owned, is it not? Yes. So I assume the airport uh, and anyone else that's a tenant there, I mean, there are a number of federal agencies that also occupy that facility are 
having to pay rent as well because it is a private it's a private facility that uh, space is being rented by so how how is that being addressed is the airport covering your share or the the bill just simply isn't getting paid at this point do you know well i'm, I'm not too sure but uh I've, I've approached the airport about uh the problems that we're having and the challenges that we're having with respect to rent because we haven't been collecting and i even requested w whether or not they can reduce our rent and uh the, the answer that i've got is that uh uh they're not in the position to to reduce our rent because if they do that then they have to do it to everybody else at the airport right but the property that you're occupying is not owned by the airport is it Yes, I'm pretty sure it's owned by the airport. No, the facility that you're currently in, that you're doing your inspections, uh, last time I checked, that would have, is that a privately owned facility or is it owned by the airport? I'm not aware that it's owned by the airport. The, is you're it owned talking by the about airport? the Guam integrated uh, air your cargo Your inspection facility. where you're, you're correct, remember correct. we toured that earlier this year. So yeah, that, that is, from my understanding, that is still airport property being on a lease to... Yes, it's on airport property, property but the right. building, here. Yes, yes. the building is it's privately private. owned. So I'm assuming, I mean, does the airport charge a certain management fee or are you directly paying what the, the private owner is charging for office or, you know, space that you have up there? I think uh, the, 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 the agreement that we have is with the airport. So is the airport like subleasing the facility? Yes. To, they're like the middle, middle man, so to speak, and then they're... I believe so, yeah. I see. But do you know what the actual charge is for... Air? for the area, the square footage that you're using? Do you know if your federal tenants are paying the same? I mean, is, are the federal oh. tenants also paying to the airport? I'm not, I'm not I, sure. I don't know what the arrangements are. I'm just kind of curious sure how much now. They're, they're paying. I don't have that information. Oh, it would be good to find out. It would be good to know. And then you mentioned you have a separate office located elsewhere from that facility. Do you, uh, you mentioned earlier, do you have an, a separate uh, administrative office located elsewhere than yes. that facility at the, near we, the airport? We have the administration building at the, at the pack here uh -huh. uh, with, with the director's office. And downstairs, we are also renting the, the cargo bay there for the processing of all uh, uh, cargoes that are coming in. Right. Well, you had mentioned you wanted to see what you could do to reduce the cost you were mentioning earlier about your administrative office space. You were looking at reducing the cost. Could yes, you just... I, I, I was looking at moving my office, and okay. the administrative office, back to the airport because I'm already paying for that. Okay. And I'm going to restructure the, uh, the, 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 the area so I can manage to move in and, and save the additional $233,000 that I'm paying. So you're talking about your here. current administrative, your current office at the pack air building then if you give yes. up that square footage you yes. can reduce well that's that's a very good idea i mean especially when you have all these other needs i wanted to ask with regards to your drug testing i was looking through your budget and i, I don't know if i'm reading things wrong with my reading glasses but drug testing the only area that i see even an amount listed is on the director's office all your other divisions have zero with regards to any budget allocation for drug testing Am I reading this right? Forty, is that forty dollars? Four zero? Right. Drug testing is forty dollars per, per, per office. employee. Okay, that, but that's all I see is forty. Am I reading this wrong? Where's I that apologize. At? That would be an error. So it's forty dollars per person, and there's what 137 personnel. So then this number is not adding up. Then, yeah. how many drug tests have you conducted this fiscal year? On your, pretty much all of your officers, I assume, are all designated positions. So how many drug have you conducted any drug tests this fiscal year? We we haven't drug tested any uh, officer this year. As I mentioned, when we look at our, at our budget, we had to prioritize. And, and, and that's one thing that, you know, we didn't, we didn't uh, consider uh, because we feel that there's other needs that we need to take care of and hopefully that we can do it at a later time. But when you talk about priority with the, the amount of money that we have, we, we need to just move on. And, but we haven't tested any of our officers. 
Director, I mean, I, I understand that, but I consider that on top of the line with regards to law enforcement because they are designated positions and your officers do deal with drug interdiction in the course of their work. I'd, I'd certainly, I'm sure the public would want to make sure that our officers are all on the up and up and that we don't have an issue. I hope we don't. We hopefully don't have an issue, but... Well, we, the, the, the way I, I put that, uh, Senator, is that uh, from my standpoint, it's zero tolerance for the agency. So if we feel that we need to test somebody, we will test the individual. Well, I, I understand the feeling of it, but, you know, I've been surprised in my time. I'll tell you, sometimes when this comes up, I'm, I'm dumbfounded. The person that ends up Thursday is the last person sometimes I would have even imagined, even imagined being on illegal substance. Uh, so I don't try and rationalize in my brain who I think may be or who looks like they might be on drugs or not, because I've, I've been wrong. <laughs> I've been wrong in the past, just, just because of the yeah. results that have come out. Uh, but because of the work that your personnel do perform, I think from the public side of the aisle, I think we want to have an expectation that I all agree. our officers are I on agree. the up and up. Uh, and setting that example just by virtue of the work that they're engaged in. I mean, the fact that they are inter interdicting these, these uh, drugs coming into Guam is a very good thing. We're very happy to hear that because obviously we have a major problem with drugs on the island. So any step that can be taken which is part of the main reason why you exist, uh, is to make sure that we can you know, pre prevent this from coming into the island and firming, harming our people and our community. So I would prioritize that. Please, if you get yes. additional funding, um, drug testing should be a standard. I mean, do your random drug testing so the public also has the same sense of confidence. Because I mean, sir, you know, there have been officers in the past that have been indicted and convicted. And yes. in the course of their duties, uh, have done irresponsible actions by virtue of the access that they have and they unfortunately where they're supposed to uphold that trust they've abused it and they got caught not everybody gets caught sometimes people get away with it lucky them but uh, you know I would always hope we want to have people do their good judgment but yeah, sometimes man I don't know I don't know if it's just that temptation or whatever the issue is but they just when the time comes and they're tested, uh, and I'm not talking drug tested, I'm talking their, their values and their, their responsibility and what they swore to do, they, they just fail. They just fail, even if they know, you know, even being uh, in that position, they've been trained, they know they eventually, you know, if we follow the trail, we're gonna catch up with you, but they still do it for whatever reason. So I just think this issue should not be t looked at lightly because of the impact, the suffering art. I mean, we read it every day. We look at this most recent murders that may very well be related to drug activity that you know is coming into our island. And um, I think more so the reason at the borders, we gotta make sure that those of you that are guarding our borders are also in the up and up. And the only way to do that is do your random drug testing, which is authorized and allowed under the current uh, procedures because of these positions that are designated that this should be a priority. Because I have to tell you, I had to read, I had to circle, because I said, is that $40? Yeah, I know that's about the average cost of a drug test, but it doesn't tell me this is a priority because there's zero in every single division yes. of enforcement in your agency. There is no money allocated. Uh, and we as will, the chairman we, says, we I mean, this I have no problem. Yes, you know, to fund this, I would prioritize funding this with the other, the other things that, that you need with regards to your agency. I'm not going to belabor the issue with regards to uh, your, your inspection for um, the, the side of your house that deals with invasive species and stuff, because I know that's a whole other lengthier discussion uh, to see how that's being done. And then also what efforts now by, by statute, and I know Senator Chris is very involved in this, they're almost trying to replicate that back again at agriculture. And I'm sure at some point I'd like to discuss that because previously when, when the consolidation happened of transferring PPQ from agriculture to customs, the fund also transferred but yet your actual staffing capacity to even address invasive species is just three or four people ain't gonna cut it. And I know that, you know, I, I've heard and seen that officers are cross-trained to look at things, but you know, we're losing that battle because the numbers of invasive species continue to increase. It hasn't decreased, it hasn't stabilized, it's continued to increase. So I know, I know Mr. Chairman, a separate time, that, that would be a point of discussion, but you know, just looking at your budget, it, it's, it's such a small section for what is becoming a bigger and bigger problem. So I, I won't do it today because I know that we're, we're you know, we're looking at just the, your main budget for this upcoming fiscal year, but just putting it on your radar that that's a collective issue of concern.
Definitely, Sandra. And then again, uh, I know you mentioned with regards to your, the, you know, I know that we just recently passed a bill once again to extend another five years to the timeline for the use of the property down at the port for you to work on constructing your facility. Um, what is the status? I mean, I know there's no budget funding here specifically for that. I know you previously presentations and the presentation at the time of the hearing for the extension was that you were looking at other grant opportunities. Where, where are we in the pipeline uh, with regards to the construction of your, your new inspection facility? We're, we're, we're still at, the, uh, at identifying, uh, identifying the, the funding level for that. Uh, the most recent uh, update that I can give you is that we met with GIDA just to give them an overview of, of what we're looking at down at the port. We provided them all the information and uh, we sat down with them and requested to, to, uh, for them to see whether we can fit in any of their programs to finance that particular uh, infrastructure down at the port. Uh, the other thing, we, we're also uh, just, uh, uh, we've been communicating with the clearinghouse to, to look at the other uh, side of the uh, federal grants to, to see what we can do to, to try and identify uh, some of the grant programs that they have to help us with that uh, uh, infrastructure that we're trying to put together. So that's where we're at with that. But you have no specific grant right now that you've no. worked for or applied to perhaps assist, maybe if they're not even able to do the whole facilities, a certain per not at this of it, time. Not yet at this time. I don't have an update. With regards to your, I mean, you mentioned right now, currently you're not even able to provide the funding for your officers to obtain their, their uniforms. Uh, with regards to any other equipment, I know our, in the past we've always referred to the LESO program for equipment. Is that still active and engaged at, at uh, Customs? Is that, is that yes. something you're still looking at? And is anything currently that you're able to acquire or been able to, to have a yes. flow of equipment that can assist you? I know well, everything is not new and shiny, but if it still has a usable life, uh, where are you with regards to that? We're still utilizing that program. In fact, uh, just uh, last month, uh, we've managed to, to obtain a, uh, a forklift that we can use at a warehouse mm -hmm. for the record management uh, uh, individual to, to use within the warehouse. So we're, we're, we, we are actively uh, engaged in, in making sure that we avail ourselves with whatever uh, 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 equipment that we can get with less so. And then I see correctly in the paper the other day, were you able to get another truck out of, was it uh, coastal management program there was some one went to agriculture one went to customs did i read that right did i recall that right sorry getting older i don't know if I, a new vehicle that you received the uh... well we just recently we we did receive uh uh to uh one of the uh caresack grant uh we were uh, a recipient of one vehicle that, that we're utilizing that uh, the vehicle was uh, given to, uh, was provided to the agency to be used at the ports of entry for surveillance, uh, both down at the port and up at the airport. So, so we recently got that and it's a Tahoe, it's a four by four vehicle. I, I'm not, only other one comment I'm gonna make and I'll wrap this up, Mr. Chair, and I understand the issues that we're looking at and the, the challenges law enforcement is being affected by on Guam because of the other opportunities that are available. People don't leave just for that. Some do, some do, but there's a lot of other reasons people don't stay in a department or agency. Um, and they might not even tell you on their way out the door. <laughs> But it's something to be mindful about. I mean, I don't know that we're ever going to equate the compensation the federal government provides. I mean, it's even amazing the amount of money the federal government is pumping out to offset the impact nationwide on this pandemic. Look at what they've given to Guam. Little old Guam is, goodness, several billion dollars. That's, that's mind-boggling. What more there, you know, has been invested back in this. So we're not going to be able to compete. Uh, in the same line. I think there's some areas certainly we can look at the amounts. I don't necessarily know to what degree because who's going to fund this? If the money isn't coming out of the general fund and the taxpayer of Guam, it's gonna, you're going to come back and say we need to raise these fees. 
which still comes out of the same pocket. And there's a limit to what this local economy, when so many of our people are, you know, on, on, on social services that are being paid for. A large part of our community does not have the financial wherewithal. And we have a significant weakening of our middle class that's happened since the initial, you know, medical, military downsizing that happened back in the mid 90s. So it's just something to be mindful of. There's not this endless amount of money uh, that's flowing so as we look at what, what the amounts are, I mean, we need to make sure we look at the revenue stream and how do we right size what we can do and what can we do with what we have versus all the things we say we can't do because we need yes. additional resources because there's, there's not a limited bound of money. And, and certainly uh, I appreciate what you provided this morning in your testimony being, and providing in your budget because it's really dire. I look at your current financial situation as really dire. Uh, and it's our hope, and we'll certainly be keeping an eye out when the administration finally reveals how they're going to spend this money. Uh, we're very hopeful that you guys are one of the, one of the front agencies that uh, are going to get funding because you definitely can justify yes. the need for it. I, and I can attest to that, Senator. I've met with the governor, and uh, I've, I've, I've sat down with the governor and, and explained to the governor that if any one of the agencies within this government that's really impacted by COVID-19, yes. it's customs. Well, I think down to the fact you don't, you're not paying your fuel bill, you're not giving your officers their stipend, uh, those are pretty basic, you know, operational needs of your agency. And I'm, I'm just surprised there's not a little more than just meeting payroll, because I'll tell you, Mr. Chair, you're here. I mean, you know, we're getting all this, you know, all is good, the deficit's down. I mean, we should be partying, and I, I don't believe it. Uh, I think it's very short term in my view, but the fact that you're not getting these basic allotments to release for what are considerable day-to-day -day needs of your operation, uh, that's very concerning. With that, Mr. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity thank to you. ask questions. Thank you, thank you for, for, that, for your time and your presentation this morning. Thank you, Senator Brown. Uh, Senator Nelson, you had a uh, follow-up before I close. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Director, I just have a couple more questions, just for clarification. If we were to um, appropriate the promotion specifically in the budget, how long will it take you to execute? Have, these, uh, have the officers have, have already been evaluated and their paperwork is just ready for submission? Is DOA aware that these promotions are pending, et cetera? Well. Uh, Senator, I, uh, I can tell you this, that once we can identify the fund, we will expedite and move forward with those uh, promotions. Okay, and all of the, pay all the documentation is, yes. is squared away to process their promotions? Yes. Okay. And then the ARP money, has the governor met with you for the $25 million that we recommended to the governor to go to CQA? Uh, no, we haven't uh, have any uh, update communication insofar as the, the actual amount for the agency at this time. Okay, it, if it's possible, um, if you can work with the executive branch because you are the appointee, the legislature requested to the governor that she's, she commits $25 million to Customs and Quarantine Agency and that's to assist you in the execution of your drug drug dog detection unit, um, the information systems that you are upgrading and the manifest that you are working to build uh, digitally with the port, uh, with uh, providing yourself with another vehicle uh, to, to x-ray at the port, because I understand you only have one. That's right. And so there's just, if you read the letter from the legislature to the, uh, to the governor, You'll see these items that throughout the uh, past couple years, we've heard the director saying is what they needed. And so since this money is coming down as a windfall, I want to ensure that CQA gets what is needed for the agency. And so these are not out of the sky requests. These are not wishes. These are ex essential to your operations. And so I think it would behoove you to interact with the executive office, the front office, and make yes. sure that, that, if, that you get that $25 million. Well, um, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, Senator, uh, I, I've, did, I, I've met with the governor and she, she did assure me that she is going to provide whatever uh, shortfall that um, we're asking for. 
Okay. So at least you have a plan for her and that you're ready to execute. Yes. Okay. And then for your Typhoon Wu tip in 2019, can you just remind us how much is due? How much is due? 22,000. 22,000. 22,000. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And then you're also pending a detail pay for $80,000. Yes. Okay. And you included that in your budget request? Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. No, we didn't, we didn't include that in the uh, budget. Not in this budget. Okay. So you didn't include the WUTIP pay and the detail pay that is overdue for these officers? We're hoping that we can use the AARP. Say again? We're hoping that we can use the AARP for that. Okay, do you have a guarantee that you're gonna get that money for, the, for that? Has there been discussions on it? Mm. Has there been so, discussions with the front office to get that AARP money for this? Well, it's, it's no. What, I what I did is I met with the uh, Bureau Budget Director and I requested uh, that that be included. Uh, as part of the, uh, the supplemental uh, requests that we're asking okay. because of the shortfall. And, you're, and, right, and right now, you're, um, the CQA is in need of 12 plus million dollars for FY 2022. But just to clarify, you're only asking the legislature to appropriate 10 million dollars. So you're asking for 12292856 is what you need, but the le the, you're asking for the legislature to only cover $10,863,267. Is that correct? Because that's what we were reading in the, um, in the budget request and then in the, uh, in also your slide brief. And you were gonna use, if we're interpreting it wrong, Please let us know that you were going to use the rest, um, a special fund. So, so I apologize. I, I think it was just the way we had created that spreadsheet. Um, but but the bottom line is, even in our budget request, we had requested for the twelve million two hundred ninety-two, eight hundred eight two hundred and ninety-two thousand eight hundred fifty-six, yes. which seven million three hundred thirty-five eight hundred thirty. Seven million three hundred and thirty five thousand eight hundred and thirty five is from the general fund, and then the four million nine hundred and fifty seven thousand zero two one from the special fund, which comes to the total of the twelve million. So, no, the ten million that I had mentioned previously is specifically for personnel cost coming from, um, I believe that was the general fund. Okay, and the Wood tip pay and the special detail pay is not included in this cost. No, it isn't, ma'am. Nor are your promotions that are overdue no. and your anticipation of hoping to recruit 30 officers no. in 2022 to include an administrative no. um, officer. Is that correct? Those are not included in that 12 million. So, that, so that's, it's not, it's okay. not included. Okay. Again, in I understand. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to say thank you to all the officers and employees at CQA. Uh, Mr. Director, I know it's been a long budget hearing, so thank you for coming and uh, providing us with all the information um, that we requested. There are still a couple of due outs that are pending the committee. And, yeah. uh, you know, I would like to work with the uh, oversight of finance so that we can ensure that you get all the dollars that's um, that Customs and Quarantine needs to operate, but also to make it right, to right size your promotions and um, your recruiting, if we could at least fund half of that for your recruitment of officers. Um, yes, so, so thank you to all of the thank officers you. and employees and their hard work during the pandemic and their continued motivation to push forward and keep our borders safe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Nelson. Simple question. You mentioned you, in the seven years, Director, 31 recruited, 50 lost. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. In the seven years, 31 recruited, if you divide it up, it comes up to about four people per year, huh? which I know is not realistic. 
Because when you did run a cycle, how many people were in the cycle? How many folks were in the cycle? Well, the last cycle that we had, we had 20, 27. Yeah, 27. So of the 31, 27 is part of that 31, correct? Careful now. Yes, yes. It is? Okay. So in seven years, you've only had one cycle. Because 27 of 31, I mean, simple math. Chief, am I correct? One cycle. Okay. My next question is, the announcement for custom officer at DOA, is that a continuous announcement? Yes, it was a continuous announcement until last month where they closed it. They closed it for what? They're going to do your testing or they're going to drag, they're not going to do anything for, for testing. you folks? Okay. They're supposed to start testing. Okay. And how many have applied that you're aware of that have applied for custom officers so they can start the testing? And they're we, how many people? We had 600 applicants. 600 applicants? That's the information that I got from DOA. Oh, Lord. Okay, let's just hope for the best that you at least get 50 like you're asking for. And they identify funding. Another one I have, real simple comment, maybe even considered a joke. You, you need money for rent, right? Yes. And I think it was just a couple months ago, the administration was offering rent, rent relief. Maybe you need to apply for that before we become homeless. That's okay? Airport, right? See, the chief knows where I'm coming from. It's all over the news. When somebody needs rent relief assistance, the department administration was giving rent relief. And I'm only saying this, uh, Mr. Brito, <laughs> is that because when, gov when anybody needs assistance for rent, they go to the government of Guam. You need assistance. Don't draw from the limited funding you have. Take care of your people. You need money for rent? Asked to be relieved from paying airport and DOA, take care of it and be done with it and move on. Okay, I have nothing else. I just want to, there's one. Oh, another one is you identify staffing. Where are you listed, Ms. Carbledo, on the staffing? Because you're new and in the proposal, it doesn't even identify a funding. Fair warning, Mr. Pareto and Chief. Look at the staffing pattern fund and fuel fund. It says new proposed. She's already in. You're ready at customs. This thing should have had your name. You need, a, you need an assistant? There should have been a position identified. You can't come here today and say, I hope to get, but you didn't put it in writing. Be mindful. We don't see it in writing. It doesn't exist. But we know. But we need to see it in writing. Okay, we need to validate it. it. It memorializes any request you make, that it's in writing, you ask for it, you're asking to promote your, your employees. Number one, you got seven possible retirees. Don't hire, promote. You got money to do it. Then ask, fill the void with what you can, you can hire. Because when you promote, you, all you did was shift the money. And the chief knows where I'm coming from. Just shift the money, promote what you can, Ask for money to recruit and ask additional money to promote. Don't, don't wait to get everything at one time because you're not going to get it. You're going to get piecemeal. And as you get it, do it, move on. We want to help you, okay? Sir, you. and with that, um, the committee will conclude the budget hearing with the uh, Custom and Guam Custom and Quarantine Agency. I know. Yeah, I know that. The committee will continue to receive testimony. Please address your written testimony to the Committee on General Government Operation Appropriation Housing and submit it via email to Senator Joe S. Augustine at gmail.com or to my office located at Rand Care Building, second floor, suite three, 761 South Marine Corps Drive, Timon in Guam. Jesus Masi to the Guam Custom and Quarantine folks that are here today and participate in today's hearing. And for those at home, thank you for watching. The budget hearing on Bill 55-36 COR relative to the Guam Custom and Quarantine Agency is now adjourned. It is 11.56. Please have a safe and be safe day and the rest of the week. Thank you.